It's a brisk morning in Los Angeles. It couldn't be later than 8am when your Hummer pulls up to the recording studio. You step out and your personal assistant and security ushers you past the cameras that shine like stars and they glide you through the door. You're used to this now. In fact, you've been used to this for decades. That's how long you've been in the biz, how long you've been at this level. You're here to record some new backing tracks for your new album. You feel a bit tired, to be honest. It's been a long few weeks. People saying stuff about you online. It's got it in your head a bit. Even at this level, that happens. Words still affect you. You're a consummate professional though. You have to push it from your mind. You step into the booth and the sound technicians and pro producers from the other side of the double layer glass give the thumbs up. The whole process only takes a couple of minutes. That's how good you are a single take. You head into where all the producers are sitting and plop into one of those really comfortable leather lounges. Words of amazement fill your ears. Just, just the usual. A bunch of yes men telling you just how incredible that track was and how the fans are going to go crazy when they hear it. It's all just noise at this point. You're used to it. The endless compliments fade quickly and your attention fixates on the television in the studio. Someone's house is getting raided. The house. It looks familiar. Suddenly fear and pain grips your heart. You fall to your knees. Why Diddy, why? Your name is Eminem and this is the Red Thread. Welcome to this week's episode. <laughs> That's the <laughs> Another That's the beautiful first. twist. Oh, what a banger. Let's go, we're so back. That's the first time uh, and last time that Eminem is ever going to be on this on this series. And I honestly, it's a pretty, that. well, true. <laughs> I don't know what Eminem's up to these days, but... That's a pretty faithful recreation of what probably happened the day Eminem found out about the stuff we're going to talk about today, and that is the PDD stuff. Yes, that's right. Today we're tackling the mysterious cryptid known as P. Diddy. <laughs> we're going to dive into yep. the troubling accusations made against him. Joined with me today are renowned musician Charlie. He's in the industry. He knows all about this. We're getting a first-hand source. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. And He suggested it. He did, suggest I did suggest it. Yeah. And also P. Diddy super fan Isaiah, who's got yeah. all the well, hot goss on P. <laughs> hold, Diddy. Hold on. <laughs> He's got it was all funny the we were making fun of Charlie, not now. <laughs> <laughs> He's, you, should see, you should see Isaiah's room. It's just full of P. Diddy posters. Big okay, I, I want to clarify. For, you know what? As a matter of fact, yes, it is. Huge P. Diddy <laughs> fan. And if P. Diddy would like to um, direct any of his future lawsuits, Charlie... Known hater of P. Diddy is the one who suggested it, so I'm innocent. That well, is actually, that is actually I, true. Growing up, I actually really liked P. Diddy's uh, feature on Limp Bizkit for my way, so that should absolve me. <laughs> I don't know anything about P. Diddy's music, really. So he can sue me, and so can Eminem. Really, they can both sue me. <laughs> they can He's both join more, up. He's a more prolific producer. Yeah, than he producer, is a, a singer. Mm. But he's known by like everyone in the industry. Yeah, for sure, and that's why I kind of thought the uh, the little introduction there would kind of give it away that it wasn't P Diddy because he actually gets into the booth. Like I I, I wrote that he gets into the booth <laughs> and actually does stuff. So I thought that could give away the twist. Oh, Jackson with the rose calling him out. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah p diddy stuff today uh before we go on hello to all of you listening to us on spotify did you know that we love you very much we do and if you're not listening to us on audio platforms that's either because you don't want to or because you didn't know that was an option but it is and you can find the links below to the spotify and itunes stuff like that and another note you could also be reading about all of this juicy p diddy information as well uh, this show is kind of like an audiobook version of the research notes more and more. So you can just, you can find the, <laughs> the source in the description below. Uh, speaking of sources, all of the information is sourced. So you can also fact check us, do that. We love it. And a final note, a big thank you to the sponsors for this episode, Babel and AG1 for supporting us in putting on the show. It really does mean so much to us and a huge thank you to them and our brand partners for it. You'll hear about them later on in the episode. And also, hold on, hold on. 
As always, a special thank you to Jackson for compiling oh. this information because he's great and we love him. Oh, I, I don't do it on my own. My girlfriend helps. So and and also all of this was their doing. So that's where the lawsuit. Should <laughs> yeah, that's just you're just covering your ass. It always starts with the, with the compliment. And out of love. I'm covering it out of love. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. what it's worth, P. Diddy can't issue a lawsuit because he's currently on the run from authorities. Mm, so actually, if he issued true. us a lawsuit, we would be instrumental in getting him caught. Yo, that'd be pretty cool. Is that actually confirmed that he is on the run? He fled uh, the I mean, he right? was for a while. Like, when his houses were raided, he fled, but I don't know if he's still currently on the run, per se. So the, the most recent sources I found were his lawyers saying he's not on the run, and here he is, and he's, you know, co cooperating with law enforcement and stuff like that. So that's why I was asking, because there might be a mismatch in information there. Well, I mean, they're obviously going to say that. His lawyers aren't going to be True. like, yeah, he's trying to, like, evade you guys. <laughs> Can you leave him alone? True, but also, like, wouldn't the police then just come out and say, well, actually, no, he, he's in a different country? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how they do business. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like it's probably just easier for him to cooperate. But regardless, Charlie. Yeah. You requested this topic. Do you want to mm -hmm. speak as to your level of knowledge and awareness about this? Because it seems like something you're passionate about. Yeah, so I'm loosely aware of a lot of the allegations. It's just there's so many that it was very hard for me to like keep up with all of them. But I know like the main ones with like the the sex trafficking stuff, the the stuff with like kids, the accusations uh, around like the time he blew up a car, his mm -hmm. potential involvement in a bunch of other th bad things that happened behind the scenes. Like I remember early, like even years ago, people speculated P Diddy might have ha had a hand in Tupac's murder. Like there's a lot. Like, this is something that spans decades. Yeah, he's a very, like, volatile figure in the industry, and a lot of people mm -hmm. are now choosing this time to come out and talk about it in a big way, which is why you've probably heard about it at home. But, like, some of these accusations go back to, like, the uh, late 80s and early 90s, so it's it's been a long time coming. Yeah. Isaiah, how about you? Yes. I, um... I knew about Diddy from like the music career, like mm -hmm. you know his his contributions his to hip hop and stuff like that. He's worked with like every big artist from like the '90s to modern day, right? Um, yeah. He put a lot of famous people on, so I knew about him from that. I actually didn't know about the more cons conspiratorial side of his career until the Eminem diss track um, "Kill Shot," where he mentions like um, he, it's his diss track against MGK when he says. Kells, the day you put out a hit, the day Diddy admits he put the hit out that got Pac killed. And I was like, wait, <laughs> is there a conspiracy theory that Diddy killed Tupac? And then sure enough, like, there's this, Diddy's in a lot of conspiracies, and he has a whole history of, like, you know, acting up and stuff like that. So I had, like, a kind of passive interest in it, because it was fun, but then this happened, and that's not fun, so it's a... <laughs> why would he, so why would he ever assassinated or, like, orchestrated the hit on, on, um, Tupac? Do you not have that in here? No, I, I, I don't. It wasn't prominent in the lawsuits. Uh, I guess it's not going to be in the recent stuff, but he was the like a manager for Biggie, and they had a feud, so a lot of the theories revolve around like uh, mm. P. Diddy just getting rid of like his biggest competition to support right. Biggie. So as Biggie's uh, like manager, he, he took matters into his own hands. Did Biggie did Biggie die after Tupac? Because they both got killed like within half a year of each other. Yeah, I can't remember who died for, first though. I'd have to double check. Yeah, it was either it, the the conspiracy was either. I mean, he didn't do it to be clear, but the conspiracy was either that Diddy killed Pac to elevate Biggie, or he killed Pac out of revenge. Out of revenge. For Biggie. Mm. Yeah, so Tupac was killed first. Yeah. Okay. That so to elevate elevate yeah. Biggie. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Because it, it was part of the whole, there's like this whole beef in the 90s between like East Coast and West Coast hip hop. Mm -hmm. um, and like Pac was one, Biggie was the other. So it was it was part of that whole thing. Um, but yeah, like, so that that kicked it off. And then Diddy has years and years of controversy and stuff going down. So, oh, yeah. It, yeah. So again, it was all fun until, you know, the <laughs> the the allegations we're going to talk about today, which are decidedly not fun. And I don't laugh at. So, yeah. Some of the memes on Twitter were funny, to be clear, but other than that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and again, like the Tupac stuff is like, I don't know if there's that much substance behind it in terms of like actual evidence. 
It it seems like something that would, was just started as kind of like a rumor or like a or a dig against uh, P Diddy, and then it just kind of like people started believing it just because. Would that be accurate? No, there is some. What evidence to is that? that? Uh, dude, fuck! It's been so many years since I went through oh, this. Oh come on. Well, I mean, this isn't the most pertinent to the most recent lawsuits. <laughs> I haven't gone over it recently, but there is like quite a bit. This is this is like old hip hop conspiracy theory stuff. It's old, but it, it shows that he's always had kind of like a history with it. Yeah, mm. yeah. He, he's like there is some level of evidence to corroborate some of the claims, and it could be authentic. But I ultimately, I don't think Diddy had a hand in it. Yeah, it was something like Diddy had made like a threat or something like that. Yeah, or said someone it was needs to take like care of him along that line. And then it was like the shooter was connected to a singer who Diddy right. knew, something like that. Yeah. Uh, well, they were all like kind of connected in terms of like agencies. And exactly. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Diddy didn't do it, but it again, his like history of like being involved in bad stuff goes way back. To me, it just reminded me of one of those kinds of things like the um, like the Marilyn Manson rumor that he removed like his rib cage. Was it Marilyn Manson? I think it was. Yeah, Marilyn Manson removed the ribs so he could yep. suck his own cock. Yeah, stuff like that. Yep. Um, like one of those rumors that just kind of like you pass it around and it eventually just becomes true because most people are saying it's true. But regardless, yep. maybe, maybe he did kill him, maybe he didn't. Who, who knows? That's not what we're here to discuss today. I will say, based on some of the behavior that's come out, I think there is a chance. Because, I mean, do you have yeah, the I mean, car bomb yeah. in here? I haven't, yeah, I haven't yeah, read yeah, through yeah. the document. Okay. So, yeah, there is a there is a chance. Like, he is someone that would do that. Yeah, he's a definitely, like I said, a, a very volatile individual. I wouldn't put killing someone past him, necessarily, from all the evidence of the other lawsuits. I was just asking about any evidence directly for the, for the Tupac thing, which I didn't see. But definitely possible. I don't know. Um, I didn't look into that because the other stuff that we're going to talk about today is far more recent and far more troubling, in my opinion. So, I mean, we've been talking about him for 15 minutes now, but who is P. P. Diddy? (laughs) Yeah, I'll just go ahead and blast through this real quick. His real name is Sean Combs, also known as Puff Daddy. He was born on 4th of November 1969 in Harlem. His father died when he was three, leaving his mother Janice to relocate the family to Mount Vernon. Dropped out of college in his sophomore year and went on to become an intern at Uptown Records in 1990. Uptown Records was founded by Andre Harrell in 1986 and had artists such as Mary J. Blige, Heavy D and the Boys, Father MC, and more signed on to the label. It wasn't meant to be, however, as Diddy ended up being fired from Uptown Records in 1993, later saying he was very passionate and didn't understand protocol or workplace politics, so I got fired because there can't be two kings in one castle. He would, however, go on to say that being fired was the best thing that could have ever happened to him as he took what he learned and went on to create Bad Boy Records. He brought with him Notorious B.I.G., who was extremely successful under Diddy's label with the 1994 album Ready to Die. In 1997, Diddy released the album No Way Out by Puff Daddy and the Family. This album included highly successful single I'll Be Missing You, which was recorded in the memory of Notorious B.I.G. He has since released four albums, the most recent last year, under the names Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, and most recently, just Diddy. His net worth is said to be around $1 billion, becoming hip-hop's third billionaire and surpassing Kanye West on the wealthiest artist list in 2022. Take that, Kanye. Yeah, that's just the big reputation Diddy built up in the industry. Very successful. A lot more than just Notorious B.I.G. was super successful under his label. He made quite a few superstars you're familiar with, but that's definitely probably his yeah. most successful client. It's probably the one that kind of like propelled him to that level as well. Like For sure. Once he made Notori- uh, Biggie big, um, like other artists would have flocked to that as well. Like it's, it's probably the first big superstar that he created. And also that quote, from Uptown Records when he was working there, I found that very interesting because he was very clearly always this way, like this, let's say passionate, even when he was just working at Uptown Records before he even created anything, he described himself as a king. So this attitude is pervasive in P. Diddy. And I don't think, I don't know, it's kind of pervasive in the industry itself at like those executive levels where these people are oh, so for sure. so personality driven and and obviously like so full of themselves so pdd is not a outlier in that regard all right so 
Now let's talk about why we're talking about P. Diddy today, and that is because of some recent lawsuits that have entered into the judicial system, starting with mm-hmm. one from Cassandra Ventura. So on the 16th of November of 2023, P. Diddy's ex-girlfriend, Cassandra Ventura, filed a lawsuit detailing a years-long series of abuse perpetuated on her by Diddy. Ventura claims that she was trapped in a cycle of sexual abuse, violence, and sex trafficking, listing that Diddy, A, raped Mrs. Ventura in her home after she tried to leave him, B, often punched, beat, kicked, and stomped on Miss Ventura, resulting in bruises, burst lips, black eyes, and bleeding, C, blew up a man's car after he learned that he was romantically interested in Mrs. Ventura, D, forced Mrs. Ventura to engage in sexual acts with male sex workers while masturbating and filming the encounters. D- <laughs> Man, this is wild. <laughs> it, is, it gets wilder. It, it only gets worse, yeah. Okay. <laughs> F, ran out of his apartment with the firearm in pursuit of a rival industry executive whom he learned was nearby. All right, never mind. He could have absolutely killed Tupac <laughs> if he's doing shit like that. He's assassinating yeah. rival industry executives. Yeah, yeah never mind. Yeah. D- demanded that Miss Ventura carry his firearm in her purse just to make her uncomfortable and demonstrate how dangerous he is. What a weird thing to and do. <laughs> carry, carry this gun, remind just you how strong I am. Just to make you angsty. Yeah. <laughs> just- <laughs> Does this make you feel upset, perhaps? Yeah. Don't you feel stupid? Don't you feel... Yeah. And then finally, introduced Miss Ventura to a lifestyle of excessive alcohol and substance abuse and required her to procure illicit prescriptions to satisfy his own addictions. So just a long laundry list of just awful stuff that he has done to this woman over a long period of time. Yeah. Yeah. So for for what it's worth, I, I don't know if you clarified, but the car explosion... Mm-hmm. was uh, actually Kid Cudi being the victim. So yep. Kid Cudi's oh. car exploded <laughs> in his driveway, and P. Diddy is the one that's blamed for it. Yeah. Yeah. I do go into it, but yeah, he th- that that did happen. It wasn't just like some random lover yeah. of Cassandra Ventura. It was <laughs> like someone in the industry. This is how like clearly powerful um, P. Diddy is, or how connected he is. Like He can actually do this to other powerful people and other like renowned people like he's yep. his influence knows no limit <laughs> all right so continuing off of that when cassandra met diddy back in 2005 she was only 19 years old and he was 37 she was an aspiring musician and he signed her up to his record label bad boy records and within months she had signed a 10 album deal jesus yeah. 10 albums my Ooh, god man Wait, that sounds extraordinarily high has she even relieved yeah. t- released 10 albums by now i don't think you could <laughs> like th- that's hard that's that's a lot of albums if you put out an album every three years you know 30 years no she hasn't yeah i mean maybe if you're like if you've got other writers and stuff and you're putting out like a couple of years sure but maybe yeah uh... Man, still 10 albums well this could be like obviously a tool in his manipulation belt like he's yeah, like lock him down yeah lock him down for life and then yeah. they're yours to play with basically which you'll see soon in august of 2006 she released her self-titled album with diddy producing the album and also featuring on one of her biggest songs me and you released as a remix also featuring young joe that song was huge when i was growing up that was yeah. a big song it was. I'm a bit too young to remember it, um, but I think I've heard it before. Yeah, I'm sure you would have. Yeah. yeah. Cassie was in a relationship with producer Ryan Leslie from 2004 to 2007. It appeared from the start, however, that Diddy was interested in a relationship with Cassie. He started to push her away from Ryan and forced a divide between them. Diddy was in a long-term relationship with Kim Porter, which ended in 2007 due to his alleged infidelity. Even while in his previous relationships, Diddy would apparently not allow Ryan, her boyfriend, around, flirting with Cassie and forcing her to do drugs while she was in private with him. Cassie was young and impressionable, and Diddy flaunted his wealth, showing his ability to look after her or control her. Diddy had the ability to skyrocket Cassie's career, but in return, he seemed to have wanted her obedience and loyalty. Diddy recognized Cassie's uh, naivete. 
According to the lawsuit, he quickly entrenched himself into every aspect of her life, manipulating and coercing Cassie into a romantic and sexual relationship. Despite her apparent initial disgust at the age gap between them, uh, she stated that she originally would ward off Diddy's advances, but he persisted, demanding her time and company. She feared that rejecting him would harm her future career and album deal, so she eventually went along with his request. So, so just the uh, like age-old manipulation tactic that all of these like Hollywood producers and all these executives yeah. have used time and time again. It's like you, you want to be famous, don't you? Yeah, you want to be yeah. famous. Just holding it over their head. Just some awful stuff. The stuff that started the Me Too movement, obviously. Harvey Weinstein, Weinstein, yeah. uh, stuff like that. Obviously, just massive amounts of pervasive. Uh, corruption that's kind of systemic in all like all those entertainment industries and yeah i i'm not shocked at all that diddy is one of them the biggest proponents of it yeah people using their power to get sex yeah not just sex not just sex just like a total control like yeah. a like a soulful uh, yeah yeah servitude almost yeah, yeah, just really awful shit. In the lawsuit she recounted a night in September of 2007 when diddy wanted to take her out on a date Upon his arrival at her apartment, he was already heavily intoxicated. He insisted she take a pill he handed her, and when she asked what it was, he assured her she would enjoy it. Later, she discovered it was ecstasy. She had never tried it before and had not wanted to. This night was her first experience with drugs. Diddy behaved recklessly and in an agitated manner throughout the night. Eventually, Casey decided to leave, prompting Diddy to repeatedly message her throughout the night, accusing her of leaving him high and alone. Imagine getting, imagine getting those kinds of messages and and these actions from what is ostensibly your boss, because he is. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's fucking. He's, he's a boss. Come back, frowny face. <laughs> yeah. I'm all alone. I'm all alone. <laughs> You're just gonna leave me like this? I'm scared. Yeah. <laughs> I'm high, and I don't want to be alone. <laughs> Why have you never messaged me like that, Charlie? The phrase of that did seem kind of <laughs> juvenile, accusing her of leaving him high and alone. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> I'll, I'll start sending you those text messages, Jackson, when I'm <laughs> yeah, out, like you. at a bar. It's like, Jackson, I'm so lonely. Where are you? <laughs> Why didn't you come? Why aren't you here? <laughs> Where's <Yeah>. my hug? <laughs> Yeah, where's my hug? <laughs> <laughs> in 2000, which I will mention, I will mention the, the mention. It was a little fun. It's not, it's not funny, but it's a little funny that someone whose whole mantra is like as a big, tough, and rumble rapper. Part yeah. of the lawsuit is that he had a cuck fetish. You know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. like, I mean, that's how that always goes, right? Like, does, I feel yeah. like we see that a lot with like these perceived powerful people like strong guys it's always like well do you actually really like to watch me fuck other dudes in front of him <laughs> all the time oh yeah yeah you think you're tough you think you can take my girl i bet you'd like to why don't you do it right now go <laughs> yeah. there she is you think like, you're so tough huh? why don't you fuck my girl oh you think you're such a fucking tough guy huh <laughs> yeah, what is with these freaks yeah, yeah. p diddy why are you naked <laughs> why, are you, why are you touching yourself why you say that Oh, you degenerate? What are you doing in my house? Taking off his pants? Are oh, you here yeah. to fuck my girl, aren't you? you here? That's what you're here for, huh? You think you're so big and strong, huh? We'll do it. We'll do it. Then. Yeah, someone breaks in in the night. He's like undoing his belt. What's the meaning of all this, huh? What, you think you can take me? Well, you try. Why don't you come over here and kiss me on my mouth, huh? Why don't you? What kind of tomfoolery is happening here in this house, huh? <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. In 2007, there was another instance where Diddy paid a promoter to create a fake flyer for a party supposedly hosted by Casey. This provided her with an excuse to travel to Miami and away from her boyfriend. Casey was unnerved by Diddy's ability to manipulate others in the line for him, and she felt extremely uncomfortable with the entire situation. What, this guy had a fake flyer <laughs> to yes. have her fly down? This is the most like high school... Elaborate shit, like, just so he wouldn't yeah, feel lonely? Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly what he had a whole fucking like production studio like graphic artists coming up with like the best flyer ever that would, <laughs> that would entice it what if she took a look at it and she's like nah I don't want to go <laughs> then all this effort was for nothing <laughs> sends more flyers like what <laughs> yeah. uh, despite her apprehension she was afraid to refuse and reluctantly went along with the fabricated event joining Diddy in Florida Throughout the trip, Diddy supplied Casey with abundant amounts of drugs, leaving her intoxicated for the duration. Once again, she felt unable to decline. 
Additionally, they engaged in sexual intercourse during this trip. Casey had said that Diddy's demanding and forceful personality made it difficult for anyone to challenge him. He frequently flaunted his wealth, making austate ostentatious that's a good word jackson Thanks. displays by paying for items with large sums of cash and reassuring casey with statements like don't worry about money i have money throughout their relationship <laughs> he planned extravagant vacations gave her a car paid for her apartment situated just minutes away from his own and showered her with luxurious designer clothing casey alleges that diddy or his management controlled every aspect of her life he introduced her to a lifestyle permeated by drug use, which contributed to her compliance. He insisted that she refer to him as Pop Pop, a term <laughs> she called her grandfather. It's fucking Ew. disgusting. Ew. Gross. <laughs> oh, Gross. yuck. <laughs> the, the home intruder breaks in. What, you think I'm like your dad, huh? <laughs> what am I, like your dad, your grandpa? Why don't you call me that? Call, call, me, call dad. me Pop Pop right now. I'm Pop Pop now. <laughs> Doesn't this make the whole Puff Daddy and shit like that names like really bad? Yeah. No, it's gross. I mean, it was always uh, the word puff daddy is always a little <laughs> awful. That awful was always kind of, yeah, that was pretty that was always bad a bit even strange, back in the yeah. day. Yeah, it's always been gross. Diddy would have his personal staff accompany Casey during all of her day to day activities and even some of her medical records sent to his email address. The example listed in the lawsuit is from when Casey suffered memory loss, possibly due to injuries from abuse and or drug abuse. When she had an MRI, her results were sent to Diddy and not her. Diddy also made Casey get prescriptions from his doctor in her name for medication that he was addicted to when he exhausted his own supply of pills. God, that's so... Like Lex Luthor. Yeah, like getting all <laughs> Fucking just <laughs> constant drug. And all, no. <laughs> Wait, how many drugs do you have to go through where you've got to get, like, someone else's prescription? Is that, is that super common? Well, if you're a big addict, yeah, absolutely. But he's not... It, surely an addict wouldn't be giving the supply away to everyone, like, passing out pills like they're candy. No, Diddy's using up his whole prescription, so he gets yeah. her to get a prescription so he can use that, too. Yeah, uh, man. He's taking the dose for two people, basically. That whole... Well, yeah, but also he's, l like, literally supplying it to everyone. She was constantly on drugs, and so were, like, most of the people around him all the time. Like, like I said before, he was using it as a means of control, basically. Like, if they were on drugs or addicted to yeah. the drugs, they were more obedient. It was, it's almost like he yeah, created a yeah. pseudo, like, drug empire in the background that operated alongside his, like, media, uh, you know, empire. Yeah, but it's like, it's like the, the lame part of a drug empire where you don't make money and you're just a junkie. Yeah, he's, he's, he's not there for money. money. Yeah. Well, maybe that like he was so empire. afraid of being lonely that he wanted to entice people in with the drugs, maybe. Maybe that's why people would only come around is for the drugs. And it was just a way Perhaps. of Perhaps, you're right. Maybe, maybe he was just lonely. Maybe maybe this will turn around for him. Maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it does, maybe, being lonely doesn't be excuse the arc. shit that he did. No, no, I, I think I hear what you're saying. You're saying that really he was a product of his environment and that we should give him a second yeah, chance. That's sympathy what for Diddy, says. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> How fucked up is it that he got her medical record sent to his email address? That is such a, like... Over the top. Form well, he's of he's qualified to analyze those, <laughs> yeah. so he's he's just looking out for her. He's he's reading. He's a radiologist, actually, as well. <laughs> he's, he's Hello, doctor. doctor. This is uh this is uh the her obstetrician, Doctor Puff Daddy, uh, <laughs> Doctor Diddy, to... please. <laughs> doctor Diddy. <laughs> um, Diddy would often show spouts of incredibly violent fits of rage, apparently beating Casey multiple times each year, leaving bruises all over her body. He would go to extensive lengths to hide evidence of this, like having Casey hide away in hotels for days while she healed. She recalls after one particular party in which Jay-Z was named as being in attendance that Diddy kicked and hit her and forced her out of a vehicle on Fifth Avenue in New York City. She got a cab to take her to her apartment, but was so traumatized and afraid of Diddy that she had the realization that she could never tell anyone due to how influential he was in the music industry. Man. Yeah. That's brutal. Not funny anymore. That's also, that also That's shows sad. a sign of, like, I guess power, but more so arrogance and power. Because, like, Fifth Avenue is, like, you know, the, the ritzy Very part busy, of New York. Yeah. There's cameras everywhere. There's witnesses everywhere. That you could just get away with stuff like that, right? Yeah, that's how comfortable he was with the stuff. I mean, it speaks to a behavior set that he had been doing for a long time, even before this. If he was that comfortable with, and he knew yeah. that he could get away with it, then yeah. 
Throughout this time, he maintained his dominance and instilled a sense of fear in her, compelling Casey to carry his gun in her purse. She liked familiarity with firearms and was apprehensive about them, fearing that the gun could accidentally discharge while in her possession. Which that happens all the time when you give guns to people who don't know, you know, mm. what to do with them. It's kind of weird. Though. It's kind of weird that he would give a gun to the person he's beating. <laughs> like, here's a way to defend yourself. That's almost like a, another statement of power, right? Like, you won't yeah. do anything about it. He's yeah. just confident that she wouldn't do anything to hurt him because yeah, she yeah, has yeah. the control over him or over her. Another incident recounted in the lawsuit describes a situation where Diddy discovered that Casey had a conversation with another music producer at a party in Los Angeles in 2009. Casey wanted to discuss her career with the producer. In response, Diddy abruptly removed Casey from the party and departed in a car. Allegedly, Diddy forcibly pushed her into a corner of the car and proceeds to, quote, stomp on her face. Despite the presence of Diddy's security team, the situation escalated beyond their control, which showed her just how loyal his oh, network was. I doubt the security Man. team even, even like tried to stop it, right? No, yeah. they definitely yeah. didn't. Yeah, fuck but they're not gonna fight cowards. back against their boss. Yeah, well, they should. <laughs> watching watching a man like pound a girl's head in, yeah. into the floor of a car, man, that's like an attempted murder. I mean, it is. Yeah, well, yeah, it is. Yeah, straight up is. Whew. Awful. Again, this is how comfortable he was with this shit. She, we, we keep talking about Ca uh, Cassie, um, but she she's a big. She was a big star at the time, right? She was a. She was also like an influential. Yeah, yeah, person. she had a hit. Yeah, yeah. So she was. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like he was doing this to like some random person that would have had a very hard time getting this news out about him. He was that comfortable with doing this kind of stuff that he was doing it to people that were big in the industry as well. That's crazy. He's doing it to other celebrities. It's yeah. it's kind of like the time Chris Brown uh, and Rihanna that whole situation where Chris Brown. Brown was comfortable enough to beat up Rihanna, but Rihanna obviously uh, made all of that public immediately, right? Yeah, and then Chris Brown is still a beloved celebrity to this day, even though he still has a history of beating other women too. It's, you just you you just made me mad. You yeah, I actually mad. fucking hate Chris Brown, but you know who I hate almost as much as Chris Brown is his fucking fans that defend Same. it. Same. I don't know how to get on a tangent. How, wait, people defend it? I thought they just oh, ignored absolutely. it. How yeah. did they defend no, it? No, if you bring up Chris Brown on Twitter right now and bring up his past, you immediately get dogpiled by a legion of his army that's just like, who gives a fuck? That was 10 years ago. He's so much better now. <laughs> Even though he like beat a woman a few years back too. It's on It's, it's on crazy. video. It's all on video. It's not even debatable. Can't, Charlie, can't you just learn to forgive and forget? Let bygones be bygones. I know. You really should just move on from it. Beat Rihanna within an inch of her life. Like, come on. It was so You're long so ago. caught up Who on cares? the past, yeah. Just listen yeah. to the music yeah. and enjoy it. Bye. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey dude, live in the pod. Eat the bug, man. If it makes you feel good, do it. His music makes me feel good. So what? So, so let him beat a few girls, right? Like, it's, yeah. yeah, it's how he powers up. It's why he's good at the music, Charlie. You, you know, <laughs> it's, it's like... It's like, have you heard the Steve, the Steve Harvey joke about Michael Vick? No. No. Steve, Steve Harvey Steve, made a Michael Vick. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, was, he was talking about Michael Vick. And he was like, yeah, you know what? He did some wrong. But that guy had, you know, record passes, touchdowns. Y you know what I say? Let a man kill a few dogs. <laughs> <laughs> what, the, what the fuck? <laughs> Steve Harvey said that? <laughs> Wait, I, that's not at all surprising. Well, the joke is that how absurd it is to step yeah. over, you know, the what they did. But yeah, it's, a, it's like the same with like the Chris Brown thing. Let a man kill a few dogs. <laughs> like, <laughs> I can't. I can't believe Steve Harvey of all what people. Would say I swear. That. I swear it was what Steve Harvey. Unless I'm really mis misremembering. Yeah, <laughs> I could absolutely imagine Steve. Steve Harvey's not a good person either. Well, he's not a good person, but he's also still like a squeaky clean person for the most part. He's oh, fucking no, family no. feud guy. No, no. Have you seen his adult shows he yeah. used to do back in the day, bro? He would no, get maybe, they. Maybe they were good. Not. They were hilarious. But like when he do like get around kings of comedy stuff like that, he would have some vulgar stuff. All funny, but like he's done adult humor before. I have no idea. No, I only know his, him as like yeah, the squeaky clean Family Feud guy. 
what I recommend to you and everyone is to look up his bit about like the Iraq invasion right after it happened, <laughs> where he's like, "Put me over there, I'm gonna start killing kids, I'm gonna start mowing them down." He said they're gonna Jesus. have me on the first plane back. I see a kid, bam! You're I a see family a pregnant woman. Right That's now. two for one. Bam, bam. Like, <laughs> <laughs> was that all a quote? <laughs> he said, yeah, all that? Uh, "Yes, yeah." He, he goes on about like, "I'm gonna gun down everyone. They're gonna throw me back so fast." Was this his like opening monologue on family? Family Feud? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, imagine. <laughs> With, like, a family of veterans. <laughs> yeah. It's awful shit. No, the, the whole bit for that joke is he's like, uh, we need to get our boys home. And I think the fastest way we get them home is war crimes. So, like, we gotta start doing them. Like, yeah, it's, it's funny. What a fucking um, lunatic. Yeah, no, Steve, Steve Harvey's funny. All right, wait, before we move on, just a quick word from the sponsors that make this show possible. Babel. It's a beautiful word. I, I really do love that word. It's also a beautiful sponsor who wants to bring you the ability to say many more beautiful words that you might not yet know. Babbel is legitimately the best way to learn a language. It's a science-backed app that immerses you in the language you want to learn or maybe the language you need to learn uh, for your next holiday, for example. It can be super intimidating traveling to a country without any kind of understanding of the basics of that country's language. And Babbel is perfect for that. They can give you the foundational knowledge you need to know to be able to comfortably communicate with people in that country, which is super important. I've been brushing up on some French for when I visit France in the future, and I can now introduce myself. For example, if you were in France and you wanted to come up to me, I would simply say, Je m'appelle Jackson. And you'd immediately know I'm Jackson. It's, it's crazy how that works. Language is wild. And what's also super great is their speech recognition technology that assists you in kind of forming your pronunciation to that country's like specific pronunciation. So it's like a, it's like a skill check, basically. Like you, you practice using their speech recognition technology. Uh, and, and it'll kind of guide you on the way to correct pronunciation, which is obviously super important. I personally use Babbel and I can say for sure it works super well. And uh, that makes sense because like there's a lot of reports and studies from like places like Yale and other big boy universities that have found that using Babbel for 15 hours is the equivalent to a full semester at college. So that <laughs> why, why would you waste tens of thousands of dollars and go into debt to learn a language at college if you're going to do that when you could just use Babbel? And here's a limited time deal for you guys, you guys specifically, right now get up to 60% off your Babbel subscription only for you guys at babbel.com slash red thread. 60% is an absolutely insane deal uh, off your Babbel subscription and it's already like super affordable. So get up to 60% off at Babbel dot com slash red thread that's b-a-b-b-e-l dot com slash red thread rules and restrictions may apply big thanks to Babel for sponsoring this episode and thank you to all of you out there for checking them out and learning a new language it's a great thing to do for yourself i believe in all of you on your new language adventures uh if you see me in france you know come up to me and introduce yourself say je m'appelle and then your name and then we'll both that we'll both know what our names are and that'll be great so yeah thank you Babel. and now over to me again it's me again, and I've got a bit of a relatable story, perhaps. I have been feeling super tired and sluggish lately. I think probably due to bad sleep, just from making these shows late at night. It's like 3 a.m. here at the moment, and we usually record at 3 a.m. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, but part of it is also due to poor nutrition, or not taking my nutrition as seriously as I should. And I think a lot of people are probably in that same boat. It's just like so much easy to just push that kind of thing from your mind and not think about it. Kind of just live life on autopilot and not take that kind of stuff seriously. It's the same for me. It was the same for me anyway, but I gave AG1 a try because I was really starting to like, ironically enough, get tired or feeling tired. And since drinking AG1 daily, I feel like I have way more energy and I'm not so run down all the time. And that's because AG1 is a foundational nutrition supplement that supports your body's universal needs like gut optimization, stress management, and immune support 
Gut optimization <laughs> makes me think of video games. That's pretty cool. Make sure you've got the correct gut build to tackle the next raid boss. Since 2010, AG1 has led the future of foundational nutrition, continuously refining their formula to create a smarter, better way to elevate your baseline health. I used to take multivitamins like tablets and stuff, but when I was looking into it, I noticed AG1 includes things like rhodiola and B vitamins for energy support in addition to all the other stuff that is usually found in multivitamins anyway, like vitamin C and zinc to support your immune health and magnesium for stress support. So really AG1 jumped out to me as a super convenient, all-inclusive way to get those kinds of things in my body very quickly. Plus, this is embarrassing to admit, uh, I've admitted it before on the show, but I'll admit it again. I can't swallow tablets for some reason. Like my, my throat just won't accept that format. I don't know why it's just a mental hang up. I can't swallow tablets super well. I usually have to chew them, which is just an awful experience, obviously. So AG1's drink is a lifesaver for me. It's made the process way easier for myself and my throat. I just get up in the morning, put a scoop of AG1 in some water, chug it down, and I can move on with my life without spending 15 minutes trying to swallow a pill that just won't go down. And really, that's what I want from my daily vitamin routine, just quick and easy. So if there's one product I would recommend to elevate your health, it's AG1. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase at drinkag1.com slash redthreadpod. That's drinkag1.com slash redthreadpod. So go check it out and thank you to AG1 for sponsoring the episode and helping my throat. And thank you to everyone in the audience for hearing the sponsors out. It really does mean so much to us. Please go check them out if they at all sound interesting to you. It really does help the show out when you do that. Thank you to those sponsors. And now let's continue on with P. Diddy's uh, allegations. Casey attempted to flee when the car arrived at Diddy's residence, but he per- he pursued her and resumed his physical assault by kicking her. Entering his home, Casey began vomiting, and the physical evidence of the abuse became apparent. Recognizing the severity of the situation, Diddy had his staff escort her to the London Hotel in Los Angeles, where she remained for several days. During this time, she concealed the truth about the abuse from her parents. After that night, Diddy arranged for his assistant to purchase gifts for Casey and deliver them to her hotel room. What do they call that when abusers do that kind of stuff where they abuse and then they like love bomb you? I think it's love yeah, bombing. Yeah. Cycle just, of abuse, yeah. Yeah, it's a cycle of abuse. Very, very common. Yeah. Casey alleged that Diddy told her that he wanted to act out his fantasy of voyeurism and that it would turn him on a oh boy. Quote. That's a quote. (laughs) (laughs) He then proceeded to hire a man and brought him back to his home where Casey wore masquerade masks and did drugs. Diddy instructed Casey on what to do and to perform various sexual acts with this man all while he watched. This specific encounter lasted days and became a frequent request. God, wait, what the fuck? I'm just, Days. I, I'm just connecting this right now, like making this unrealistic. Imagine how fucking crazy that would be to be hired by P. Diddy to fuck <laughs> a superstar, Ca- Cassie, Cassie, uh, what's her name? Cassandra. Yeah, yeah. Name. Cassandra Ventura. Ventura. Yeah, like th- like a superstar at the time, basically. Like, uh, how mind fuck would you be? Where did he find this guy? Like Craigslist? Like you just get a message from like P underscore Diddy. No, so like in high in stuff. like high societies, there's like um agencies for that kind of thing, and they're oh, all yeah. super sworn to secrecy. Oh, are they actually? That's an actual thing. Yeah, I think that's a real they thing. They sign NDAs, they'll they'll perform acts, they'll show up, they'll leave. A bunch of celebrities do it. Cause you know, like think about it this way. If you're someone like Taylor Swift, right, and you want to hook up with someone else, your two options are it's another celebrity who has equal skin in the game or someone that has to like sign an NDA after it happens. Because like, if you just do it with like an average Joe and then they go talking about that could ruin your career, that could ruin record deals, that could ruin image, stuff Mm -hmm. like that. So yeah, most of the time, like they'll go through these like in the know agencies to make it happen. Yeah. But they don't usually use it to cuck each other, right? Oh, I'm sure there's so many fucking cucks at that level. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> if Dan Schneider was just a little bit more famous, he could have <laughs> <laughs> He could have cut. 
He flew a bit. See, there, there's the whole philosophy of like staying out of trouble. You have to stay in the clouds, right? Mm-hmm. So as long as you're in the noise of it, you probably won't get caught. But if you're beneath the cloud or above the cloud, you get caught. So mm-hmm. Dan Schneider, too stupid, below the cloud. P. Diddy, too evil, above the cloud. <laughs> and then there's all the other cucks currently doing it. That's fucking... just in the cloud, doing in the cuck cloud, just doing yeah, whatever awful. it is they do in there. We need to dispel these clouds so we can see them for who they are. And we can see them all jacking Cucky. off, watching each other. <laughs> yeah. They probably want that, though. God damn it. The cucks want to be You're seen. You're right. Oh, no. Put them back in the cloud. They can't <laughs> they <go>. lose. <laughs> They're, they win at every angle. <laughs> no. They beat us again. <laughs> no, un- unironically, what it is, what it is with a lot of these guys who do, like, the cuck stuff is because there's one element of it that's shame. The other side of it is that they want to degrade women, right? And in this situation, Diddy almost feels like like he's made her into cattle, right? Oh. That he can parade her out and have her just sexually degenerated, and it's all his doing. He owns her to this degree. Like, it's all about degradation. Right, so it's not his humiliation as much it is, as it is hers, then. He gets yes, off correct. on that. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Uh, I didn't consider that yeah. element of cockery. Yeah, well, that's what... So there's a lot of, like... um serial killers and stuff like that or like serial rapists who uh will get arrested and they're into this kind of thing like watching other people have sex and that tends to be like the more vicious idea of it like sure there's guys who just like want to feel pathetic so they like to be degraded and yeah, seeing like their, their wife and like, shit like hook that. up with another man right but then yeah. there's the other side of it where you're making her do something against her will you're forcing her into oh, this position uh, okay okay yeah, right, yeah. That's enough. move on yeah. I get, I get anyway. Ick. Yeah. Well, this is a pretty icky story. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, specific. Casey was expected to find locations and hire male sex workers when did he want it? According to the lawsuit, she would tell her to search up quote large black penises. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Oh, there was. An, I didn't. I didn't write this down. There was another anecdote that uh, my girlfriend told me when she was researching it. I, I hope she was researching it. <laughs> <laughs> she was telling me about how he would make her wear uh, uh, like paint her nails white so that they would like juxtapose in front of the black penises as well like she, mm. he was very specific about that i remember like the, the, she had to wear white fingernails or paint her are we sure diddy wasn't like a middle-aged white man because that's <laughs> that's yeah, what it so sounds weird. like <laughs> yeah that's three words I never thought I would say on this podcast or any podcast. Large black so congratulations. Penises. <laughs> yeah, large black penises. I hope your church pastor isn't listening to this episode. Yeah, man, I hope we scared him off by now. My <laughs> yeah. good lord. I'm so sorry. To everyone who goes to church with me who's here, I'm sorry. Don't look, don't look at me Sunday. <laughs> the situation's being frequent, sometimes weekly. He would become so intoxicated and belligerent during these situations and would allegedly also beat Casey in front of the sex workers. Well, it got less funny immediately, like in terms of going from large black penises to just sad shit again. The lawsuit lists multiple locations where this, what did he refer to as our secret to Casey, what happened, including Trump International Hotel, the London Hotel, the Intercontinental Hotels, and more. Man. Hotel suites would be decked out with baby oil and Astroglide, and Diddy would provide Casey and the sex worker with seemingly endless supply of drugs, including ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, weed, and alcohol. What's GHB? I have no idea. I don't know what that stands for. It's a nervous system depressant. It uh, produces feelings of euphoria, relaxation, sociability, blah, blah, blah. It kind of, it's similar. I mean, obviously, it's much, much stronger. I don't know what for. I think it comes in a powder, if I remember right. But I think you can take it different ways. Like I'm pretty sure you can inject it, if I remember okay. right. So he basically it. he was like the fucking. Willy it, it, it basically of drugs. makes you get super loose and like out of it. It's kind of think okay. like heavy, heavy alcohol. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, Casey states that this amount of drugs helped her to disassociate during these events. Diddy would film these encounters, and even when Casey deleted the videos, Diddy would claim that he had backups. So using it for blackmail, probably like ho- hoarding these. Oh videos yeah, ab- absolutely. What are you going to do? Go to someone else, and I release like hours of you hooking up with other men. 
Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, good. I'm gonna edit out the noise of me furiously going at it in the corner, but that's <laughs> can't embarrass my reputation. It was a recurring pattern where she felt unable to say no, understanding that it would trigger anger and abuse. If she dared to say no, he would get his security team to corner her and depart with him, as occurred during her 29th birthday surprise dinner. Casey tried to escape Diddy multiple times, but he utilized his staff and networks to lure her back in. During a brief breakup, Casey actually dated musician Kid Cudi. Diddy was irate as he had found her phone and saw emails between her and Kid Cudi. He apparently had a manual corkscrew in his hand and charged towards Casey in an attack. In a panic, Casey escaped to Kid Cudi's home. I will mention the reason I stopped is because I thought it read as he he did a corkscrew. <laughs> like Diddy started spinning at her. <laughs> he just pulls out a skateboard and does a fucking awesome yeah. thing. That's how happy he is to be cucked by Kid Cudi. Oh, yeah. Oh, why Radical. I oughta? And he just jumps and contorts in the air. Yeah, yeah he's like the Tasmanian devil. <laughs> <laughs> in a panic casey escaped to kid cuddy's home she returned to diddy however as she felt as though she had no choice when diddy would ask to just talk to her diddy was still enraged and hit her multiple times casey says that he threatened to blow up kid cuddy's car around this time Kid Cudi's car did explode in his driveway, and Cudi has since come out and confirmed her version of these events. Uh, it's probably just a coincidence, right? <laughs> yeah, just fault, faulty wiring somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I hate it when the brakes do that. Cars, you know, can't yeah. trust them. They just explode sometimes when you're in the industry. And you're it's a darn fucking, shame. And you're fucking Diddy's girlfriend. It just sometimes comes with explode. the price of fame, I guess. Yeah. Casey says she was stuck in a cycle of abuse, trying to run away, being trapped, apologizing, and coming back. It was a rotation of bruises, black eyes, busted lips, and heavy amounts of makeup. She believes that Diddy paid Intercontinental Century City $50,000 for hallway security footage that showed him beating and throwing glass at her. Man, if that's fucking true, if that is true and they have proof to back that up, that Intercontinental Century City is complicit in hiding evidence of... Of domestic abuse, fuck whoever whoever accepted yeah, that. Yeah, it had it had to be hotel. a manager or something, right? Because it's not like fifty yeah. thousand is a bribe to the whole organization yeah, or anything. Yeah, it'd be nothing. It it it'd go to an individual, so they need to find the individual. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. he's culpable. Yeah, absolutely culpable. In the last year of their relationship, Casey knew she needed to leave and try to avoid him. They arranged a dinner in 2018 where she thought they would be discussing their official separation. However, instead, they returned to her apartment after the dinner, and he forced his way in and onto her. She repeatedly asked him to stop and attempted to push him away. She was sexually assaulted, and this left her traumatized, and says she continues to suffer emotional distress. In this explosive lawsuit, Casey asked for money for compens compensatory damages, including lost wages, earnings, etc., with interest, and for the mental pain and anguish and severe emotional distress she was put through, plus other legal fees. Just one day after the lawsuit was brought against Diddy, they settled outside of court. The terms of this were not disclosed, and Diddy's attorney in a statement made it clear that this was not an admission of wrongdoing. Cassandra's statement in this says, I have decided to resolve this matter amicably on terms that I have some level of control. I want to thank my family, fans, and lawyers for their unwavering support. And Diddy's statement says, We have decided to resolve this matter amicably. I wish Casey and her family all the best. Love. Weird statement, but okay. Um, yeah, overall, so that that's Cassandra's uh, lawsuit and her version of the events and allegations and stuff. I mean, it's so detailed and it goes in line with a lot of other allegations that have been made about P. Diddy and other situations that have come up surrounding P. Diddy. And again, like the stuff like uh, Kid Cudi coming out and confirming that his car was exploded by Diddy. There's obviously some level of truth to these events. So even though they have settled outside of court, which I guess is her decision ultimately, so that that's fine. But I, like, it doesn't undo everything that was done. And in my opinion, this seems like a pretty accurate 
portrayal of the events. Do you guys kind of agree? Yeah, I've said this a bunch, but I think that he is guilty of everything he is accused of. Like, every single claim right now, except for, like, the Tupac one, I think that one, there's not Mm. enough evidence there, but all of this kind of shit, absolutely. I think he is 100% guilty. I mean, it's like, if it was one person who showed up out of the blue and there were other witnesses who said, like, oh, well, she seemed happy during the relationship, maybe it's just for money, but the fact that it is one of many, many claims Everyone who knew them during this like 20 year span of time uh, attested to like this behavior that Diddy would do weird stuff like this, that he was weird around women. Like there's too many people who support this narrative for yeah. it to be just a complete fabrication from this one girl. Plus it's so, it's Allegedly. so detailed. It's such a detailed recount of like 20 years of abuse. Like there's so many specific specific situations that she recounts that again, other people can back up as well that it seems pretty airtight to me in terms of validity. And also, so just some good news, she's now married and seems like in a pretty happy, healthy relationship, though I guess you can never really tell with, especially with Hollywood relationships. Uh, And she has a child, I think two children now. So it does seem like quite a step up from P. Diddy, which is good. That is good. Just wanted to put a little bit of positivity out there after. Yeah. After that. After all that not positivity. Yeah. After all the very bad, yeah. This next allegation is from a woman named Lisa or Liza Gardner. On November 24th of 2023, another lawsuit was filed against Diddy and singer Aaron Hall. So it was a suit against two people by Lisa Gardner or Liza Gardner for battery, sexual assault and negligent infliction of emotional distress. The lawsuit was filed within the time frame of the Adult Survivors Act and details an event that happened in 1990. Basically what happened was Liza and her friend were invited to New York City by a few close friends of theirs who were members of a chart topping record group, a recording group signed to uh, MCA records, which, which Diddy was a part of. Liza was from North Carolina at the time. She recounts that they met up with Diddy and Aaron at the offices of MCA Records where an event was being held at the time. Diddy and Aaron were very flirtatious and offered rounds of drinks all throughout the night. So remember, this is in 1990. So this is a long time ago by this point. He would have been, I think Diddy would have been fairly early in his career at this point, right? This was before. Yeah. Yeah. It was before everything like in the late 90s that kind of propelled him to where he is now. Diddy and Aaron extended an invitation to Liza and her friend to join them at Aaron's apartment for an after party. There, Liza alleges that she was offered additional drinks and coerced into engaging in sexual activity with Diddy. Following the assault, Aaron allegedly barged into the room and proceeded to assault her as well. After the ordeal, Liza hastily dressed and fled the apartment with her friend following closely behind. And when they were speaking to each other afterwards, they kind of... Uh, recounted their experiences and a lot lined up suggesting that both women had been exchanged between both uh, Aaron and and Diddy days later Diddy turned up to where Liza and her friend were staying and he acted in a Diddy-esque irate manner something we've come to know and kind of uh, experience over the next 30 years as being pretty common with Diddy. He began to choke Liza to the point where she passed out and he was also searching for her friend out of worry that she would alert the authorities about what had happened. This lawsuit goes into just really disturbing details like apparently Aaron Hall had bragged about engaging in sexual activity with minors as well. Like there's uh, there's information in, in the lawsuit about that specifically and confirmed that Diddy was sometimes in the room when this was happening. So he was at least complicit to the conversations about some really disgusting stuff happening with minors. Liza Gardner is demanding a trial by jury and is looking for monetary and or economic damages, including loss of income, wages, compensation, and more. So just another example of the systemic rot in the music industry more so as well because it's not just diddy this is also another person aaron hall and they're just so comfortable doing it all together it seems if the allegations are true i should say they're allegations but like they, they're clearly so it, there's people entrenched in the music industry that feel so comfortable doing this that they just they do it together it's like so pervasive and gross so one thing that you didn't mention here is that she was 16 at the time 
the Liza Gardner was 16 during this period. Okay. Yeah, that sounds about right. I don't know why that wasn't in there. Man. So it's even more abhorrent than you could possibly imagine. So he is also, Oof. like, throughout this story, doing all of this with someone underage. Yeah. So, yeah, if she was underage, then he wasn't just bragging about engaging in sexual activity with minors. Uh, they had actively done that with this with this person that's making the accusations. So that yeah. definitely steps it up in terms of the severity of it. Yeah, it's yeah, awful. I double checked, and yeah, according to NP, according to NBC, the amended complaint filed by Gardner on Tuesday, which was like a week ago, uh, obtained by NBC, said she was 16 at the time, thus too young to consume alcohol or consent to sex. So that's in the amended Oof. lawsuit. Maybe that's why I didn't see. Yeah, it this then. is the yeah yeah. That that might be why it's not there. Because I remember seeing that headline. And the fact that it wasn't there, I just thought it was important to mention as well. Yeah, so yeah, maybe you just important. missed it because this is pretty brand new. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, awful, sh- awful stuff. Uh, Charlie, you can take the next one. Sure. This next one is Dickerson Neal versus Combs on the 23rd of November, 2023. A lawsuit was filed against Diddy, Bad Boy Entertainment, and Combs Enterprise LLC by Joy Dickerson Neal for suffering as a result of being drugged, sexually assaulted, and abused and being the victim of revenge porn. The lawsuit was filed within the time frame of the New York Adult Survivors Act, same as Liza Gardner's. Joy was a student at Syracuse University studying psychology. She was looking to make a step into the music industry and also worked many odd jobs in the industry, such as a receptionist at a renowned talent agency and as a location scout. When they met, Diddy made several advances on Joy, but she had heard that he had a reputation of treating women badly and rejected him every time. So he already had that reputation. Yeah, and this was in 1990. <laughs> Yeah, before he even had like his massive amount of fame to his name. Fucking Christ. In January 1991, she eventually agreed to meet Diddy in New York, but she chose the Wells restaurant in Harlem as she was reluctant and knew the employees there. During the evening, she started to feel more comfortable. They were sharing drinks and food, and she made a point to say that there was a period of time that she went to the bathroom and she left her drink unattended. Diddy did not want to date. Diddy did not want the date to end. Didn't want the date to end and invited her to run errands with him. And once they were in the car, he brought out a blunt. Originally declining, Joy felt pressured to take a hit, and Diddy told her that he would have and Diddy told her he would have her home with enough time to study. After this, Joy says her memory is incomplete. She remembers feeling rubbery in the legs and being unable to stand, and he brought her to a music studio. Then she recalls being outside of where Diddy was staying, possibly thinking that it was his house, but an acquaintance of both of theirs answered the door. Once inside, she was sexually assaulted, and due to being drugged, was unable to fight Diddy off. She says that the day after, she was in so much pain in a way she had never felt before, and held a lot of embarrassment and shame. This resulted in her not going to the hospital or reporting the incident, instead seeking safety in her apartment. Devante Swing, a member of the group Jodeshi, would inform Joy a few days later that Diddy had filmed himself assaulting her and showed him and others the video. She was horrified to hear that everyone had seen it and that it would haunt her for the rest of her life. Joy recalls that Devante wanted to speak up about it, but was scared that the band would lose their record deal as they were in the midst of recording their album Forever Lady. Holy shit. So they saw this video, still didn't do anything about it, and he is bragging about assaulting her and filming it. Well, he sh- not just bragging about it, they like they showed the video. Yeah. Like yeah. they were just willingly showing these to people in the industry. Again, it's just... And the dude's like, sorry, we've got, like, this whole deal worked out, you know? Yeah, Yeah. so, like, I saw you get sexually assaulted and shit. That video was brutal, but we're recording Forever Lady right now, so if you could just, like, tough it up Every single time these situations happen where someone gets away with, like, decades of, like, assault and abuse and rape and stuff like that, it's always because there were a hundred people who were like, yeah, but that didn't want to make things weird. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we just had so much going on that was in jeopardy if I was to report this. It's like, mm, I mean, you know, is it that urgent? Do I need to report it? We're doing great on this iTunes. Record. You know, I don't want to kill that momentum or anything. Yeah. What's that fucking saying that's always overused about how, like, the only th- the, the one thing that, like, uh, sto- uh, lets bad people do bad things e- is Evil prevails being- when good men do nothing. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's the Call of Duty quote yeah. that, <laughs> that comes up when you get killed in top four. <laughs> I think, I'm pretty sure it's a Churchill quote originally, but yeah, it gets used everywhere. 
Uh, it's yeah. true though. Like so it many, is. so many situations here could have been prevented if the people witnessing these events had had put aside their ambitions, their goals, their fear of them being like targeted by Diddy, and instead done the correct thing and alerted the authorities about just the yeah. troubling stuff. This is 1991. You could have stopped Diddy before he ever mm. even spiraled even more out of control. He wasn't like, even that. Ended. He was he was successful, of course. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna claim that he wasn't and that he didn't hold some level of power. But he wasn't Diddy, the multi billionaire, well, the billionaire uh, media mogul, like empire creator that he is now. Like it would have been way more possible back then. I also just don't understand because, like, I feel like you gain so much more by being the one to blow the lid off it, right? Like now, this yeah, band or then, this group, no. I'm not even familiar with, and they were so excited for this album that I don't know. But I probably would know them if this was the group that led to him going to jail for these kind of things and stopping him. Like they would have had so much more success. I, I don't. Th- I I don't think back then, but now, yeah, yeah. Like in current year, where everyone's so connected, and like the allegations and stuff like that gets a lot more screen time and people taking it seriously. But back then all it would have taken was like BDD saying like, no, you or something. And then like now they're shunned and no one believes them. Yeah, I guess that's true. Maybe back then it would have been different. Anyway, joy experienced an emotional breakdown as a result of the traumatic incident. And during flashbacks withdrawing socially and struggling with insomnia and uncomfortable feeling towards being touched her academic performance suffered as she found it difficult to concentrate or engage in studies. At one point, her mother insisted she go to the emergency room after Joy expressed thoughts of ending her life. Subsequently, she spent time in a psychiatric unit and received a diagnosis of clinical depression. Despite her discharge, the incident continued to haunt her in additional ways like being called hurtful labels like crazy from classmates upon learning her psychiatric hospitalization. Joy had tried to file reports against Diddy and and had even allegedly spoken to several prosecutors with the intention of pressing charges. But members of the law enforcement told her that she needed witnesses or people who had experienced similar assaults. People around her were terrified to speak up against Diddy, as he was powerful and could ruin future opportunities. He was also known to be violent, and they seemingly did not want to be at the other end of his anger. God damn it. Yeah, Joy continued to work in the industry and took a job for a company that organized an event called Mecca, which was a popular party series featuring performances by hip-hop artists. On one occasion, she encountered Diddy at an event. Despite her efforts to avoid him, He cornered her in a public setting and confronted her. In a dramatic gesture, he knelt down and publicly begged her to forgive him, or to believe and forgive him. Others present at the event inquired about the exchange, but Joy, still apprehensive, simply acknowledged that he had wronged her in the past without providing further details. I bet he felt like such a good guy as well. Like, he's like, God, I'm doing the right thing here. Like, I'm a hero. I'm relieving her of this pressure or whatever. I'm so good. I'm so cool. She'll definitely have sex yeah. with guys in masks after this. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's just a crazy level of delusion on his part. I, I, I doubt he yeah. even thinks that what he did was wrong. Joy felt compelled and forced to leave the music industry as Dizzy, Diddy was such a prominent figure in his career only growing. She was unable to continue working as his presence was unavoidable. Joy says this trauma has continued throughout her whole life. She would feel sick whenever she heard his music, thinking of what her career could have been. She was ultimately unable to finish her college degree due to the stress brought upon her by Diddy. Joy says that it was Cassie's filing against Diddy that forced her to face this assault again. Joy is demanding a trial by jury and is seeking compensatory damages for mental and emotional injury, distress, pain and suffering, and injury to her reputation. I wish one of these people would demand trial by combat instead so someone could beat the shit out of P. Diddy. On Bro, the that would just well, absolutely Choose brutalize your him. champion. Yeah. <laughs> God, that would be so fucking cool. They anyway. send like, uh, like Conor McGregor into the ring. With yeah. Just- <laughs> oh, yeah. It'd be so nice. Yeah, he's, got a, he's made a career out of beating like defenseless women and like, you know, people, people like that. Time for him to get his. I'm sure he's gotten his ass beat a few times. You just don't hear about it because those people are probably dead now. Yeah, true. Maybe. (laughs) So this is Lil Rod. On 26th of February, 2024, a lawsuit was filed against Diddy, his son Justin, multiple members of his staff, and Chalice Recording Studio, Love Records, Motown Records, Universal Music Group, Combs Global Enterprises, and more by Rodney Jones. Rodney Jones, or Lil Rod, was a, was a former producer and videographer for Diddy. He worked on nine songs on Diddy's album, Love, from September 2022. Oh, he worked on... Sorry, put all that together. 
He worked on nine songs on Diddy's <laughs> album, Love, from September 2022 to November 2022. I thought that was the name of the album, Love from September 2022. I was like, what the fuck is that name? The, the album name is Love from September 2022 to November 2023. <laughs> A very specific period of time of love for, yeah. uh, for Diddy. Great year of loving, I suppose. Yeah. But yeah, so he worked on that album, nine songs for love. And he lived with Diddy for months at a time. Lil Rod is said to have have many witness statements, video, audio records, and images which corroborate his complaint. Apparently, Diddy required Lil Rod to film him all the time. And on <laughs> which is a great idea. <laughs> which is a great idea if you're committing crimes constantly. Like, fucking crimes. Yeah. Hi, I'm Diddy. Welcome to Jackass. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you film this. <laughs> what a yeah. fucking idiot. Of course, it's not it's not idiocracy though, it's confidence. That's what's annoying about this to me is he's not an idiot. Well, he is, but he's not an idiot in this way. He's just extremely confident that he's not going to be caught and no one will like, yeah. you know, care. That's what's so annoying. It's yeah. his ego. Yeah. Yeah. So on several occasions took his phone and recorded himself. So he started vlogging his own shit too. Yeah, yeah great. This has resulted in hundreds of hours of footage and audio recordings of Diddy, his staff, and guests engaging in illegal activity. <laughs> Lil Ron claims to have irrefutable evidence of the acquisition, use, distribution of ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms. The displaying and distribution of unregistered illegal firearms, case 124CV01457, document 1, filed on 226-2024. Page seven of seven thirty-eight. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you don't need to read it specifically. You could have just said it. Well, no, no. Just in case anyone wants to check out the case number and they're only listening via audio, <laughs> so they can go ahead and quickly remember that case number. Mister Combs providing laced alcoholic beverages to minors and sex workers at his home in California, New York, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and Florida. Man, they got him in four different places, handing <laughs> out beer to kids. Keep in mind. He wanted all of this documented. Him yeah. lacing alcoholic beverages and giving them to minors and sex workers at his homes. I, do you think he uh, was doing it to like jerk off to it? Like he was proud of what was happening, or was he actually like going to use it in promotional <laughs> footage or something? You think he was jerking off to videos of him hanging out with his friends and stuff? Yeah, <laughs> like-, yeah like I don't know why he'd even want any of it recorded. Like, there's there's nothing that you could use that for. Like, oh, I want to hey. Lil Rod, can you pull up that party from like two weeks ago? I want to see me give this kid some beer again. Well, like, hey, what, like yeah. I don't understand. No, maybe it's when he's feeling lonely. He looks back at it and sees all the fun times he had with his friends. He, he <laughs> probably wanted to do like some video with it or like, yeah, like be like, like no, video. this is my life. This is what it's it's like. This is the lifestyle, you know, like. I don't know. I think another equally possible thing is this guy's got actual amnesia. Like he has memory loss problems from all the <laughs> frequent drug abuse and he just he needs this footage to remember his life. It's like fifty first dates, the end of fifty first dates, he wakes mm-hmm. up to this playing on the on the TV <laughs> to remember his whole life. He's like, Oh shit, that's right, I'm a criminal. <laughs> I beat women, of course. <laughs> He wakes up pregnant. How did this happen? (laughs) Oh, shit. Wait, yeah, that's right. (laughs) I totally forgot. (laughs) Mr. Combs' chief of staff, Christina Coram, KK, instructed her staff to retrieve drugs so she can provide it to Mr. Combs for his consumption. Christian Combs drugging and sexually assaulting a woman. Mr. Combs detailing how he planned to leverage his relationship with Bishop TJ, Jakes, to soften the impact on his public image of Cassie Ventura's lawsuit. (laughs) Young Miami's cousin and or assistant sexually assaulting Mr. Jones. Actor Cuba Gooding Jr. sexually harassing and assaulting Mr. Jones. You didn't know about Wait, that. Whoa. Okay. No. Okay, this what? is going to get interesting. Yeah. That's a name I haven't heard in so I know. long. And it, well, it's not a great situation for it to pop back up in. <laughs> and it only Holy gets Holy shit. Uh, so rapper redacted on Mr. Combs' yacht consorting with underage girls, sex workers, and R&B singer redacted in Mr. Combs' Los Angeles home, consorting with underage girls and sex workers. I want to know who they are so bad. Oh, me too, man. I was laughing at the uh, the 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 entry up there, entry F, Mr. Combs detailing how he planned to leverage his relationship with Bishop T.D. Jakes to soften the impact on his public image. Uh, I was imagining it was like, he's like talking to the camera about how once these, once these videos get out, he's going to need to smooth things over. Like he's talking about the videos being <laughs> filmed right now. He's like, I got to get T.D. Jakes on the line because once these videos are out, I'm fucked. I'm so screwed. Hold on. 
Uh, by consorting, do you mean like engaging in like sexual acts of or just talking to? Which I would imagine it's more than talking would be. Because the reason I the reason I say that is because if Lil Rod is so quick to say Cuba Gooding Jr. was sexual harassment, maybe he just says, "Oh yeah, this rapper was there, but they were just talking. Maybe they didn't know what was going down. It's potential. Maybe that's why Kevin redacted. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, true. That that's why they could be redacted. Yeah, because because they didn't want to drag them into it if he doesn't think they did anything wrong. Well, it's also like legally maybe the. Uh, that the too. legal team was well. like, "Yeah, we can't, we can't say their names if it's not something that's actually illegal." Yeah, I'm gonna send you guys this article because I looked up Cuba Gooding. No, 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 no. it's it's coming up. It's coming up. Well, the, this is nine hours ago. There's no way it's here. Oh. It's just this this headline and this picture associated with it is fucking extraordinary. So it says. Cuba Gooding Jr. surfaces in Miami amid Diddy's drama, and it's him on the back of a golf cart looking like, like really shocked at what he's reading. <laughs> like he's reading it in real time. He's on his phone. Yeah. Oh my god. I'm gonna throw this up on overalls? screen as well. He's got like a vacation shirt. He, yeah, he he's got like a vacation shirt on. He's going to a yacht. <laughs> he's like, shit, I did what? <laughs> like he's just he's like, damn, I don't, I don't Who did I sexually that? assault? That- He's, sh- he's in the next picture. He's shaking his fist. Damn you, little Rod! <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking crazy. All right. So Diddy made numerous promises to Lil Rod, including that he would win Producer of the Year at the Grammys for How his can you love promise that? album. That's not a contractually like obligated promise. How could you? How could I mean, you? How could you? If you're young in the industry and knowing PDD's power, it's not inconceivable to think that he could sway those kind of things. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, true, I guess. Like, if he's that, like, connected to the Grammys, whoever chooses yeah. that, then yeah, maybe. Exactly. So he said he could have 250 k for Lil Rod to get any instruments he desired, along with ownership of his or $20 million property, the One Star Island in Miami, Florida. Additionally, he promised access to record label executives. However, this turned from promises to threats. Allegedly, Diddy even threatened to harm Lil Rod physically, saying he would eat his face off. <laughs> Diddy even said he would kill his own mother, Janice, to achieve his goals. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Wait. <laughs> wait. Unprompted? Just go. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine how that conversation went. Listen, I will kill my mother right now. <laughs> like, I will do In an it. Instant. You think Janice is reading these fucking allegations and be like, what the fuck? <laughs> My son said what? That's fucked up. My son's gonna kill me. Why? <laughs> also, Edie's face off, was he on fucking bath salts at the time? Like, what a, what a probably, yeah. weird threat. According to the lawsuit, Diddy was relentless, intimidating, flaunting his firearms and boasting about his ability to evade consequences for violent acts to so fear an individual like Lil Rod. The lawsuit further alleges witnessing Diddy displaying and distributing guns from his residence to individuals dressed entirely in black. (laughs) Lil Rod says that Diddy told him he was responsible for a shooting in a nightclub in New York with rapper Shine. Apparently his girlfriend at the time, Jennifer Lopez, carried the gun for him and passed it along to Diddy when he got into an altercation. And there's also an article reference there of Sean Combs, Jennifer Lopez arrested after New York shooting from 1999. Wait, so Gen- he's saying that Jennifer Lopez handed him the gun and then he used the gun? Like, he actually started shooting? Yeah, yeah, that's the allegation. Oh, that's what Diddy told Lil Rod. And I mean, wow. Jennifer Lopez was arrested as well, so. Yeah, that did yeah. happen. In September of 2022, Diddy was holding a writers and producers camp at Chow's recording studio. Diddy, his son Justin, and a man named G were in a heated conversation that moved from studio into a restroom near where Lil Rod was shitting. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Is that because you read restroom? <laughs> yeah, I definitely thought that said shitting because they went to the restroom and I, and I thought they barged in on him pooping. <laughs> that's the that's the most fucked up allegation of all. They didn't knock before they barged in. <laughs> <laughs> where Lil Rod was sitting, which was about two feet away from the bathroom. He then heard multiple gunshots ring out. According to Lil Rod, a crowd gathered outside the restroom, and when the door opened, Diddy and his son walked out, and G was lying on the floor in the fetal position, bleeding from his leg slash hip area. Lil Rod ran to G and began applying pressure on the wound and demanded that someone call for an ambulance. During this, Diddy and his son had disappeared to another section of the studio. <laughs> Lil Rod was told by Diddy to inform the police that he was not involved in the shooting at all, 
and was instead instructed to lie that G was shot standing outside the building in a drive-by incident. What G would certainly not play along <laughs> with that, though, right? Wouldn't Whoa. he be like, no, I got shot by him. <laughs> Maybe he was afraid of getting shot again by fucking... That's true. Diddy, who knows? That is super true, and there's, there's <clears> pictures <throat> of the aftermath here. Lil Ron says that he was... Lil Ron says that he still has the clothing that he wore that day, which he thinks may still have G's blood and DNA on it, and provided photos that show the assumed blood and mess inside a bathroom to prove that this wasn't a drive-by shooting. Lil Ron suffers from PTSD, severe anxiety, depression, and insomnia from this event, as the gunshot was so close to where he was sitting that he thought it likely that he himself was about to get hit. Mm. So there is photos of this blood in the bathroom and everything. Yeah. And definitely doesn't seem like a drive-by. Unless the drive-by was by the bathroom. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, they just scooted in on a little <laughs> tiny car, like a, a smart car that fit through the doors and started yeah. blasting. You're sitting on the toilet and you just hear like the little electric motor getting louder down the hallway. Yeah. Yeah. I love how Diddy's defense also, and his son's defense, was just to move to a different part of the studio. Like they just walked down the hallway. They're like, we were down here the entire time. We you don't see, know what officer, down we there. weren't in this room. We were yeah. in that room. You're free yeah, great, to go. Great defense. <laughs> While living with Diddy, Lil Rod says he was the victim of constant and unsolicited groping and sexual harassment by Diddy. He was also forced into working in environments like Diddy's bathroom where he would walk around naked. Lil Rod expressed his discomfort to Christina Cram, who was chief of staff to Diddy. She responded with, you know, Sean will be Sean. <laughs> what the fuck? How was this made... Just what was the absurd lengths they went to to be like, it's just dudes being dudes, all right? Get get your pants off. I've got some Astro Glide. Sure. She was fucking chief of staff. Like, she she owned Oof. that position. Who has a chief? Is that a chief? Like, I thought that was a presidential thing. Maybe I'll be watching well, too no, much West Wing. At, the, at, that, at that level, he has so many businesses and enterprises. This would just be someone that's at the, like the upper end of the food chain there. Mm. Yeah, but, you know, Sean will be Sean. Like, Jesus Christ. And walk around naked, grope everyone. Yeah, that's just hey, that's just quirky old Sean. Yeah, maybe you should talk to someone about that instead of perpetuating and accepting it. She also attempted to downplay the groping as friendly horseplay. <laughs> that's even worse <laughs> than Sean will be Sean. <laughs> what? What are you getting so upset about, Lil Rod? It's just he diddling your balls. What you? Got, you don't do that with your other friends? <laughs> then she slaps his ass. It's like just the worst <laughs> working environment. <laughs> yeah, she has to play along with it too. Like, no, we all do that here. She starts like fucking thousand years of painting his butthole. It's like, yeah, hey, we're just having fun. This is what we do. Jesus. Th there is a level of that that is like guys being guys, like nut taps and stuff like that. But not yeah, like. that's so not, different. Not though. like you don't grabbing someone friends. being like, oh, this one's hanging lower than the other today, huh? <laughs> get the get, like it. <laughs> I mean, it also depends on the person, though. Like, I've never been a fan of that. Like, if if. Charlie, if we were hanging out and you nut tapped me, I'd like be I'd be pretty annoyed. Well, yeah, that's just something like high school friends did. Like that's not something adults do. Yeah, hopefully. Lil Rod believes that Christina aided Diddy in sexually assaulting him and working with Diddy to groom him into a homosexual relationship. He furthers this by detailing how Diddy knew that Lil Rod idolized music producer Stevie J. He used his access to him to entice Lil Rod to engage in homosexuality and showed Lil Rod a video of Stevie J participating in it. To show that it was normal practice in the industry. What? Did he again promise Lil Rod that he would win producer of the year at the Grammys if he participated in homosexuality? What? Yeah, he showed crazy. Lil Rod a video of him, like, of having sex or, like, yeah, sexual with stuff Stevie with Stevie J. No, it showed Lil Rod a video, well, this is the allegation, it showed Lil Rod a video of Stevie J participating in homosexual acts to show that it was, it was normal. This is just <laughs> oh, what it so means it wasn't to be <laughs> Oh, it wasn't. What? It wasn't Diddy and Stevie. Okay. Well, I'm not sure if it was. I didn't... So, so this guy, Lil Rod's like, I really like this producer, and he's like, Why don't you sit on down, Rod? Let's watch a yeah. video. And he's yeah. like, See, this is just what guys and this Hollywood is what your hero do. does now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah don't you want to be like you your hero? Yeah. Don't you want to be cool? Yeah. Wait, also, how like Lil Rod just Lil, Lil Rod Lil Rod just brings up a random uh, music producer and Lil, like Diddy has fucking pornographic videos of him. Like, how many people has has Diddy got footage of that he can just do this? Yeah, so Probably, can yeah, you just like he's got say a, crazy a name network, and he's like, oh yeah, I got a video of him triple team. Like, <laughs> good to go. Let's get on it. He's like the Great Alexandria Library of fucking celebrity porno <laughs> of gay porn. Yeah. <laughs> 
Lil Rod also believes that Diddy was grooming him to pass along to his friend Cuba Gooding Jr. They met on Diddy's <laughs> boat, and Diddy left Cuba and Lil Rod together in a makeshift studio on the yacht. Cuba then began <clears throat> groping and touching Lil Rod, who felt extremely uncomfortable in this situation. Apparently, Cuba did not stop until Lil Rod actually pushed them away, and you provided a picture of them together what in that tiny little that? studio. Who took this picture? What am I looking at? What the heck? Probably fucking He's Diddy. Like, was, look at it, him. It was probably Diddy. Yeah, it's probably Diddy. <laughs> that is a pretty Bro. like that is a pretty chummy uh, like hand over his shoulder, over Lil Rod's shoulder there. I mean, look like, at his uh, eyes. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that that is a look of lust. Yeah, that I've is, never like leaned over. Yeah. This is pretty. That's like irrefutable evidence in my eyes that there, there was something. <laughs> fucking look at the mood lighting. <laughs> there it's was at red. least something weird. Yeah. yeah. On Thanksgiving of 2022, Lil Rod was at Diddy's Miami house where Young Miami and her female cousins were also celebrating. Drugs and alcohol were at the party, and Diddy offered some to Lil Rod, who refused. Lil Rod walked into the bathroom shortly after, and while there, Young Miami's cousin burst in and began to grope and sexually assault him. Shocked, he pushed her away and ran from the bathroom, but was followed out by the cousin who wasn't accepting his rejection. She continued to undress and attempt to straddle him in front of Diddy and his staff. Lil Rod provided images in his lawsuit of himself, Diddy, Young Miami, and her cousin on that day. Jesus. And then here's some of those images. Everyone's just fucking sexually assaulting each other. Yeah. 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 That's, f- that's foul. Yeah. Lil Rod says that he was often forced to solicit sex workers. Diddy would also want him to perform sex acts at his pleasure. Another incident on Thanksgiving saw Diddy asking Lil Rod to solicit sex workers from Booby Trap on the river in Miami. Shout out. Diddy actually provide. I think What's it's, that? I think, it, I think it's Booby Trap on the river. Oh, that's the whole name of it? I think so. Like, is, is there Bo- only one river Booby in Miami? Trap on the river? Yeah. I, think. I have no idea. I've never heard of that. You've never been? But anyway, did he provide Lil Rod with a bad boy baseball cap and forced him to wear it at the venue? It was a signal to sex workers that Diddy was in town and Lil Rod has been sent by him. Oh my god. You have their own like code. Diddy That's like a sock on the door. <laughs> he Holy he had shit. he had like flares on these guys. He had be, like, envoys. By- he had fucking messengers that what were sent out heck? to deliver him fucking It's like it's medieval. It's like he <laughs> had a rape language. <laughs> he, like- yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What the heck? Dude, this guy, Lil- we, gotta lo- we gotta lock him up for something. There's so this is much like stuff super here. Villain. Lil Rod did not want to do this, but was intimidated by Diddy and felt forced to. He felt Diddy had some level of power and influence over him. In February 2023, Diddy compelled Lil Rod to bring sex workers back to his home. Here, Lil Rod believes that he was drugged by Diddy. He woke up naked and confused in bed with two sex workers and Diddy. He recalls wandering around the house naked Jesus aimlessly. Fucking Bro, Christ. what the heck? Yeah, he also details that Diddy hosted a listening party at his home in July of 2023. And the party consisted of his son, Justin, a redacted R&B artist, sex workers, and underage girls. Apparently, at least five of the girls were under the age of 16. Ooh. And Diddy forced all of the women to drink De Leon liquor laced with what Lil Rod believes was ecstasy. No IDs were checked at this party, and Lil Rod says he felt uncomfortable and attempted to leave, but Diddy forced him to stay. After drinking the De Leon, Lil Ron felt dizzy and passed out, <laughs> waking Ron. up early in the fall. It was a t- you just read whatever's there. It's Lil Ron, obviously. <laughs> Lil Ron didn't oh, make an appearance. <laughs> <laughs> was a typo. Don't put a typo there. <laughs> Maybe that's the name of one of the sex workers. Who knows? <laughs> Use your brain. I'm like Ron, Ron Bergemon or whatever his name. Or fucking from Ron Anchorman. Burgundy, I, yeah. I read what's on the prompt. <laughs> yeah. Burgundy, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah Ber- Bergemon's America's Funniest Home Videos. <laughs> I read what's on That's, the prompter, just like AFV. Yeah, just like Tom Berger. <laughs> this was Lil Rod still. Lil Ron has not made an appearance Lil, yet. It's still it's still Lil Rod, and he got okay. fucking drugged here, waking up early in the following morning naked with a sex worker. Lil Rod says that there were many people of power that attended these sponsored events and listening parties at Diddy's home that should or would have known that the underage girls were present. Apparently, there were specific bottles of alcohol that were only for females and certain bottles only for himself, staff, and friends. That is fucking abominable. Yeah, it's one of the worst allegations so far. Because if this is happening, I mean, it has to happen frequently, right? It's just, there's so many people involved. He's got his own code language, so this is definitely frequent. Oh, yeah, true. Like, the baseball cap, the fucking, like, once you put on the mask, everyone knows who you are kind of thing, where, where, like... There's a signal for Fresh fucking meat, venues. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's crazy. So <laughs> Lil Rod claims that he was not compensated for his time living and producing for Diddy, while Diddy and other defendants listed profits from his work. In an attempt to work out publishing and royalty rights with Diddy, he was offered 29 k for his work, which was 13 months and thousands of hours of work that also resulted in nine songs that made it on the album. Lil Rod was seeking at least 50 k Oh, dude, he value yourself media- more. $50,000 for 13 months of work and also getting nut-tapped every fucking work day? Fuck that. Worse, I'd rather get nut tapped as opposed to having my nuts fucking fondled in every room True, I go yeah. into. It was worse. Yeah, you're right. He took to social media making a plea for Diddy to pay him, which led to an onslaught of threatening messages from the likes of Stevie J and others. <laughs> Wait, what? So he's like weaponizing his <laughs> heroes. St- yeah. St- Stevie J's reaching out like, you didn't like the video? <laughs> you didn't like the fucking video of me, <laughs> me banging other dudes or whatever that Diddy showed you? You bitch. Like, why's Stevie J getting involved? Who is Stevie uh, J? P. Diddy's forcing him to. That'd be my guess. Yeah, the lawsuit true. also talks about someone called Fahin Muhammad, an individual that Diddy told his staff to always contact if they ever con- contact what? If oh, if they were ever contacted or pulled over by police in Miami or California. Lil Rod believes that Fahin spoke to the police after the shooting incident with G, and it is his influence that caused the police to go with the drive-by shooting theory. Lil Rod also witnessed Christina Karam order all assistants to keep Diddy high off gummies and pills and made everyone from butlers to housekeepers walk around with packs filled with multiple types of drugs so it was readily fuck? available if he asked has he ever been sober <laughs> like what it the doesn't fuck? sound like it she made lil rod carry around a drug pouch on multiple occasions another shocking allegation made in this lawsuit was that diddy has hidden cameras in every room there in his house go. which i 100 yeah, percent believe yep. so my guess is that stevie j video came from one of Diddy's listening parties where he started 100%. doing whatever was on that video that he hid, that he secretly He's clearly recorded. got like a bunch of footage of all these powerful people and that's probably why Stevie J went to bat for him against uh, yeah. against Lil Rod is because he's like yo you want this you want this video of you doing some freaky shit released because if you don't you got to make this Lil Rod shit go away right now and that's what caused him to like a uh, 100% Yeah So Lil Rod Lil Rod believes that Diddy has incriminating videos of important celebrities, music label executives, politicians, and athletes without their knowledge and in compromising acts. Lil Rod is demanding a trial by jury and is after monetary and or economic damages for loss of past and future income, compensation, and more. He's also seeking damages for mental anguish, humiliation, embarrassment, stress, anxiety, emotional pain and suffering, and distress. Now, one other thing I want to mention here is those listening parties have become quite a talking point in the the stratosphere of the online so there's a video of lebron on an instagram live with diddy and he goes hey everyone knows there ain't no party like a diddy party Uh, and now we're getting some information about what those parties might look like here with with underage girls drugs and sex workers so that's what lebron was talking about like uh, there ain't no party like a party with 15 year old girls and lots of alcohol and booze and shit I, I I hope this goes the length of like an actual, you know, open court situation where we can really get some names about who is complicit here and it's not just swept under the rug. I really hope so. Yeah. I'm super curious who all attended these parties knowing what was happening. They had to they had to know what was happening. No, I I think it's definitely possible because it might not be a listening party. Like I imagine Diddy also hold like held numerous like normal, normal ones like music parties with like industry veterans and shit that weren't like at his residence and whatever. But I'm wondering who knew all of this. Cause if you attended this, you knew Lil Rod was saying that it was pretty clear that the girls were underage. There was drugs everywhere. So if you attended one of these, you would know. Yeah. Well, at the very least, uh, like it's very clear that there are a few figures that n- just know about Diddy's complicity in the, in the sense that, What's it like? He's manager, not manager. He's chief of staff and people like that who are very complicit. So there's definitely a yeah. lot of people that know and aid, aid Diddy in in this kind of stuff. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, absolutely. So now let's talk about the response to the lawsuits. Um. So UMG, who is UMG again? That's Universal, Universal, Universal Music, Music Group. Group. Yeah. They own like everything. I issued a fiery letter to Judge Oatkin in retaliation to Lil Rod's lawsuit. They assert that the allegations presented are recklessly untrue and accuse Mr. Blackburn, Lil Rod's attorney, of abusing his license for self-promotion. 
Oh my god, they're actually going for it's all for clout. Is that's their official angle? That's their angle. That's UMG's angle. <laughs> How so Diddy's does UMG own Diddy's label label or the other way around? I don't remember. Well, Diddy does not own UMG, I'll tell you that well, much, he but he is that. definitely associated with them, and a lot of his acts definitely run through UMG, I'm sure. Yeah. I just wonder how wonder how like tangled up they are because they were they were named in the lawsuit. So I I guess they're specifically um defending themselves here instead of just defending Diddy himself. I'm not sure. Yeah, probably. Uh, so anyway, the quote from from this is, I have never seen any lawyer in any pleading in any court accuse people in companies of criminal conduct without the slightest basis and then try to file an amended pleading completely jettisoning, jettisoning every allegation underpinning the original claims and substituting completely different and irrecon... Ir- Jesus Christ. Irrecon... Can someone pronounce that for me? irreconcilable thank you allegations to support the very same (laughs) claims so that's from universal media groups or music groups uh lawyer representation so they're claiming that because the the lawsuit was amended this is clear irrefutable proof that some tomfoolery is going on and and such so i i I don't know if that i mean there's fucking photo evidence and apparently hours and hours and hours of footage evidence of all the stuff that Lil Rod is talking about here. I mean, throughout the document, I've got the pictures here. So it doesn't seem like it's just made up to me. Plus, there's a history that you can pull from from the other lawsuits and the other victims of Diddy. So many people talk about it. Yeah, it's not coming out of nowhere. Yeah. And what's the say? Like when there's smoke, there's a fire or whatever. Where there's, smoke, there's yeah, where there's fire, smoke, yeah, where there's there's fire. There's just so many people talking about this, like with with very similar recounts of the events. So Diddy has been posting regular content on his Instagram, still to this day, by the way. <laughs> like he just posted like four hours ago, with the comments disabled. But back in December, he made the following statement: <clears throat> "Quote: Enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation, and my legacy." Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth. Sean Diddy Combs. So that was his statement, and since then he hasn't he hasn't commented on anything as far as I can tell. Again, if like if these reports were unvalidated or they were non-specific just kind of like oh i think he did this wrong or this one time he did this or whatever but it's the fact it's all these unrelated people who all have the same stories about him being a creep or whatever like you know allegedly you know you know (laughs) yeah it is i mean we still have to like say that it's all alleged because it is still alleged until the courts do their job and determine if if this is uh if he's guilty um, so yeah, all alleged he, he's owed his due process and his day in court, but I, I really hope that day comes soon so that we can get some answers about how guilty he is and how complicit others are in his acts as well. That's that, yeah. like, did he, did he's a lost cause to me? I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure he's guilty. Um, what I'm most interested in at this point is just how widely spread this rot is in the industry and how many names we can glean from this and bring to the surface i'm really hoping like we got cuba gooding jr out of this so there's a there's a lot here that we can get i think if the courts do their job and the investigative uh you know the police do their job as well in actually executing their search warrants and and figuring out how deep this goes. And that brings us to the next thing, which is something that happened very recently. So on Monday, the 25th of March, 2024, authorities from the US Department of Homeland Security conducted raids on Combs' two residences situated in Miami and Los Angeles as part of a federal investigation into sex trafficking. So they clearly had information. If that- the, yeah, if the lawsuits co- corroborate an unrelated Homeland Security investigation of sex trafficking, that they think it's the federal government thinks it's worth it to raid two of his houses at the same time. Yeah, shit's <laughs> like, not it's looking good for PD- Like not looking good. Yeah. We didn't even really t- like 
they touch on sex trafficking in the allegations. Like, I I don't think that that like this investigation by Homeland Security has even been spurred on by the allegations. Themselves. No, it, it hasn't because no. like sure it can be implied like maybe sex trafficking was happening with some of the underage prostitutes mm. and stuff like that, but like the it's not like a few celebrities filing lawsuits made homeland security decide to do this they've been doing their own investigation for a while yeah that now everything's coming to light at once so if if their determination is that they need to execute a search warrant for an investigation into sex trafficking on two residences owned by this guy that is they've found something that led them to to a search warrant being justified which is pretty concerning And yeah. also speaks to something much larger here. Validates the lawsuits as well. Also, uh, he was not at either of these residents because allegedly he had received some kind of tip that this was going to happen. So this is when like the fleeing allegations came out where he had run away. So he had abandoned both of these properties. He was well aware this was on its way. So he took preemptive measures to get out and potentially high damning things yeah that's definitely a possibility he definitely wasn't at the at the residences when this occurred so it's likely that he was tipped off uh and remember back to lil rod's uh testimony not testimony his lawsuit where he claimed that uh someone named fahin muhammad uh is an individual that diddy is in relation to or or is in the pocket of uh and fahin has connections with the police so Potentially, yeah. potentially, Diddy has deep connections with someone in the police, which is not great. Uh, this quote is from the statement is from the Department of Homeland Security. Earlier today, Homeland Security Investigations New York executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation with assistance from HSI Los Angeles, HSI Miami, and our local law enforcement partners. So that's them just confirming the fact that they uh, they executed multiple warrants. And, and raids into these premises. And according to an unnamed source, federal agents have interviewed three women and a man with more interviews scheduled pertaining to allegations of sex trafficking, sexual assault, and involvement in the solicitation and distribution of illegal narcotics and firearms. That last part is not at all surprising, given he's constantly f- popping pills and people are carrying around pouches full of pills to feed him. Firearms were allegedly discovered at both properties during the raid, although details regarding their type and ownership currently remain unknown. Diddy was not present during the raid. However, aerial footage captured his two sons, King and Justin, in handcuffs. Although they were not formally arrested, they were detained during the raid. After the raid, King posted a comment on Snapchat, or a story on Snapchat, writing, Stop with the cap! using a hat emoji, seemingly in response to the speculation surrounding the raid and their detention. How complicit do you think his children are? Well, it sounds like they're pretty complicit, considering one of them was involved in the shooting with G. So <laughs> yeah. Well, in that, that, <laughs> yeah, in that case, yeah, that, that specific one. Which one was the one that was complicit yeah. in that? Was it Justin? That was Justin, Justin yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Allegedly, yeah. Okay. Um, At the time of the raid, TMZ published a video showing Diddy pacing outside a customs office at the Miami Opa Executive Airport, so that's where he was. He seemed to be moving freely, indicating that he was not on the run and not under arrest at that stage of the investigation. Well, he could have been on the run, considering he was at the airport. Jack Sweeney, a prominent online figure recognized for monitoring celebrities' private jet movements, tweeted early Tuesday morning that Diddy's private jet had flown from LA to Antigua. While the passengers on board remain unidentified, reports suggest that Diddy was probably not among them. Diddy's attorney has since come out and slammed Homeland Security for their, quote, gross overuse of military-level force, which is, fuck off. Your, 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 dude's, your dude's being investigated for sex trafficking. Don't fucking complain when the investigators do their fucking job. God. That's what they always do. They always find shelter yeah. with like anti-gov crowds because it's like, yeah, yeah, right, guys? Yeah, they sure are bad, huh? Like Gross overuse of military force. They didn't fucking drive a tank through like it was Waco. It was just, it, was a, it seemed like a pretty standard executed warrant, right? Like a pretty normal raid. Yeah. In this statement, they also confirmed that Diddy and his family were never detained and cooperated with authorities. And this is a quote. Yesterday, there was a gross overuse of military level forces. Search warrants were executed at Mr. Combs' residences, Dyer said, which is their 
attorney. There is no excuse for this. <laughs> there is no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. Mr. Combs was never detained but spoke to and cooperated with authorities. Despite media speculation, neither Mr. Combs nor any of his family members have been arrested, nor has their ability to travel been restricted in any way. That doesn't mean, this is me speaking, that doesn't mean he's not guilty, by the way. Uh, continuing on, quote, this, unprece- this unprecedented ambush p- paired with an advanced... What do you mean ambush? He's acting like they were walking out of the woods and they jumped out of nowhere, surprising them. <laughs> Gilly suits yeah. and everything, yeah. Anyway, quote, this unprecedented ambush paired with an advanced coordinated media presence leads to a premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs and is nothing more than a witch oh. hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. There has been no finding of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. Oh, please become, I hope that he becomes one of those, like, the media is messing with our minds, man. Yeah. They're all in on it. They're oh, all will. forcing yeah, their narrative. Yeah, that's great. Well, there, also, the quote, there, there has been no finding of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. It hasn't gone through the court. You're a lawyer. You know they haven't gone through the court system yet. They, they're currently <laughs> in the process of determining. Oh, yeah. The day after it happened, no no charges, huh? Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> what? <laughs> It's what? important we remember that he's still innocent. Yeah. <laughs> right now, at this moment, as I'm talking. Um, <laughs> what are... Did they say what the raid was for? Just an arrest attempt on Diddy? No, no, no. Not they arrested. Searching for something they were the searching house. the premises for pr- yeah, okay. evidence and evidence proof of, theft, of trafficking. sex trafficking yeah, as yeah. well as those illegal firearms and illicit illegal. drugs. Okay. Which I'm sure... Like, the fucking... Every staff member would have had a pouch with drugs on them. So, I'm sure they found evidence of the illegal drugs. Um, f- so footage depicting the aftermath of the raid on Diddy's residence has surfaced through TMZ, showing that the officials thoroughly searched the premises. Every corner seems to have been inspected, with furniture overturned, safes forcibly opened, and documents scattered everywhere. Which is good. That's good. I, I yep. if there's something there, which I assume there is, they would have found it. Well, I don't. So I don't think there would be, since he clearly knew this was coming. I imagine he got everything out that would be a problem. Um, yeah, maybe. Ah, man, I hope. I hope not, man. Fuck. Additionally, it has been reported that Homeland Security confiscated hard drives during the operation, as well. So maybe now they're combing through all the footage that Diddy has filmed. Yeah. So that's kind of where we're at right now in terms of the investigation that happened very recently. That was last, was it last week, Charlie? Yep. That was about a week ago, maybe a little bit more than a week ago, but yeah. Yeah. End of April anyway, for not April, end of March. For those of you listening uh, in the future, hello, let us know if PDD is guilty and currently spending time in jail. (laughs) (laughs) But it doesn't stop there. I wanted to end this one on another little anecdote, which is Diddy's relationship with minor artists. So artists who are minors at the time. Due to the allegations of professional malpractice, a new wave of scrutiny was washed over all of the previous relationships Diddy had with minors. As such, a creepy video of Diddy interacting with the 15-year-old Justin Bieber resurfaced where Bieber was said to be spending the next 48 hours with Diddy. Quote, He's having 48 hours with Diddy. This is Diddy talking, by the way. Just I should specify. Ugh. Oh, Diddy <laughs> says he's having 48 hours yeah, with Diddy. Yeah, he referred Diddy. himself to the oh, third person. Oh, gosh. <laughs> were we hanging out and what we're doing, we really can't disclose. <laughs> oh, no. But it's definitely a 15-year-old's dream. Diddy, then 40-year-old, Yikes. says in the video. He would continue by saying, quote, he signed to Usher, and I had legal guardianship of Usher when he did his first album, after implying that he's been given custody of Beeper for 48 hours. <laughs> so uh. Oh, in another video taken months after, did he confronts Beeper about not returning his calls? Oh, <laughs> have you guys my hug have you guys seen that video oh. of of like the awkward confrontation between Diddy and Bieber? Where it's Bieber like, looks super uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. he's like. Huh. Yeah. I, I don't know, man, or whatever. He's like, he's just kind of like dismissing it. But like, did he genuinely seems upset that he can't get in contact with Bieber? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is so sick. <laughs> That's so fucking weird. He's having 48 hours with Diddy. Where we're hanging out, what we're doing, can't disclose, but it's a 15 year old's dream. That's I like it so here. creepy. Uh, 
All right. The <laughs> these comments and videos come across as awkward but innocuous and can be described a way of simply being puff pieces intended to cross promote Bieber and Diddy. More concerning though, daddy. get it? Was a resurfaced Howard Stern interview with Usher from 2016, where Usher, who was closely tied to Diddy when he was a minor, admitted that he saw some, quote, very curious things that occurred at Diddy's New York mansion. Usher was sent to live with Diddy for an entire year, hence the legal guardianship referred earlier, when he, Usher was just 14 years old. Why is Diddy? Fuck? What what is what is happening with these parents? Why are they just sending children to live with Diddy for like? A, well, a you hear of stories time? all the time about like you know parents would let it happen because they thought it would help the chances at fame or something like. Yeah, but that, this is right? uh, they're acting like it's a, a, a med- medieval kingdom. Like they're sending their children as like wards of uh, Diddy. It's so it's so strange. Like here's your new squire, Diddy. It's Usher. Like it's so strange. How would this help? How would this help, like, launch a career? You can still work with with him without, like, having to live with him. Huh. All right. I, I just don't understand how that even <laughs> happens in the first place. I don't understand the reason for it. When Stern followed up by asking if Usher would send his own kids to Puffy Flavor Camp, which is what Diddy called his mentorship program, Usher quickly said, Hell no. Puffy Flavor Camp? What the fuck? He would <laughs> have kids come live with him and said it was Puffy Flavor Camp. He's the king of branding. <laughs> like, what? I don't know, man. <laughs> this is so out in the open. It's the, I feel like this is one of those cases where when the dust settles and he's in jail for, you know, life within the next couple of years, people will look back at this moment and be like, how the fuck did people not know? How did no one see? Like, this was That's all the right troubling in thing. Face. People knew. I'm about to start breaking stuff. I swear, every every single one of these stupid, like the, the actors or singers or whatever, this stuff's been going on for thirty years. And like you said, Charlie, it's so in the open. He invited yeah. kids to Puffy Flavor Camp, and now that they're all getting caught for it because social media is the way that it is, and now that everything's being so uh, like exposed, they go up there and give their little speeches where they're like, "We're at the forefront of stopping sexual assault." They like perpetuated meanwhile, it for you know, thirty years. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Me, you know, go to like a Walmart. Those guys aren't raping each other, like <laughs> periodically. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they've done a better job at stopping it than you have. Like, oh gosh, it's so infuriating. Puff, it's so puffy new. flavor camp, and everyone's like, "Yeah, this is normal. Let's go to parties where there's like drunk fifteen year olds. I bet we can hook up there." Like, I mean, man. right that right there though. Like, this is an example of a celebrity knowing something's wrong and not doing a single thing about it. Like, Usher's like, "Fuck no, I wouldn't send my kid to Puffy Flavor Camp. I know what happens at Puffy Flavor Camp." Yeah. Well, if you know it, you wouldn't send your it's kid there. Do something about dudes. it. Be a good human exactly, being. Exactly. Yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. Everyone just stays shut up constantly. Because they're afraid. They're afraid of Diddy and his puff, puffy flavor camp. I would be too, but like you have to do the right thing at the end of the day. Otherwise, you're just complicit in perpetuating it. Also, you uh, you didn't finish the quote. Uh, Usher would go on to say, and this is before about oh, yeah. the when he was living with, when he was living there. Usher would go on to say, I got a chance to see some things. I uh, I don't know if I could indulge and even understand what I was looking at. It was pretty wild. It was crazy. There were very curious things taking place, and I didn't necessarily understand it. I, I, from the sounds of all the listening parties and all the other fucking just deplorable shit that PDD's done, I am sure a lot of the stuff that uh, Usher saw take place would have been completely, like, just impossible for a 14-year-old to understand. So that makes complete sense. Yeah. I, I looked up Puffy Flavor Camp as well. I can't find any information about like what the program even was, but apparently it was Usher and Justin Bieber is the two big ones there. Yeah, so like I like I said, it was just kind of like what he called these mentorship program. It was just like what he himself called it. Yeah, but I mean, surely there have to be some kind of catalog, right? Like like a brochure. I was just wondering. No, it's if not there was an like actual camp. On it. It's just like. It's just like them coming over and being mentored by him for an extended amount oh, of time. Oh, it's not like a formal thing. So No. Oh, were you, oh, wait, no, wait, you I, actually thought I it was told, a camp? Like, <laughs> my kids go. Well, no, no, no. 
No, I thought it was like, so you know how, I guess this is more of a modern thing. Maybe it wasn't back then, but you know how like gurus have those like courses and shit that you sign up to and yeah, they have like yeah, names yeah. associated with it. I thought it was like that, no. like a course you signed up. It's for. a one-on-one mentorship. Like it's just what he called Got the it. experience. Okay. I see. That makes so much more sense now <laughs> onto why I couldn't find the fluffy, the f- fucking puffy flavor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, if he makes it out of this, he might, he might start the puffy flavor camp. Like, that could absolutely yeah, be a thing that happens. All right. As lawsuits emerge and Homeland Security raids his properties, speculation arises about the future of the billionaire Diddy. We can't know with guaranteed certainty the validity of the multiple claims of the lawsuits, but there does appear, I mean, it's undeniable, there does appear to be a troubling and problematic history of abusive behavior and frankly just shocking activity by diddy that seems to be overwhelmingly illegal and also overwhelmingly covered up by an industry that seems to have a habit of turning a blind eye if it means career security and progression i don't think any of us disagree with that statement right Mm -hmm. i definitely don't disagree like i said i think he's guilty on pretty much everything he's accused of there's too much evidence too many similar stories from so many different people i think that he is guilty i'm like i I am channeling my inner isaiah here i'm so i nothing makes me madder than just like the institutional rot in these kinds of um you know industries like it's so pervasive in the entertainment industry down to the bones yeah every part of it yeah it is so troubling how many and it's it hurts so much because these people are living better than 99.99999 percent of the world and they're yeah. doing it on the backs of being the most evil people. It's painful. I hate it. It makes me so mad. Yeah, it's it's infuriating. But, I mean, if we want to look at it from a positive angle, it's finally starting to be more common that these people get held accountable. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. It and is. I think that's entirely because of pressure from the public. Which, and it's sad yeah. that that has to happen. Oh yeah, it's not this. out of goodwill or anything no. that it started. Out no, 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 it's no. because these it, they can't exert their power anymore when everybody knows about it happening. They used to be able to bribe police officers, or they would have control over the judicial system, but now they can't because so many people know about what's happening. And that's the only good thing that can be gleaned from this is that hopefully this means that this behavior will be less pervasive and institutional in the future because the more you know the more we shine a light on this kind of stuff and take this kind of stuff seriously the less likely other people in the future are going to be able to act in the same way sadly that means the last 30 years has kind of been fucked in terms of what has happened and there's going to probably be a lot more people that we all looked up to or enjoyed that weren't great people and sadly that's just kind of what has to happen in terms of accepting that these people are as evil as they are and how so how how likely do you think it is going to be charlie that there's going to be people in the comments defending diddy no i think that is extraordinarily unlikely in diddy's case diddy never had what chris brown had which was the infatuation of like the young teen audience Mm -hmm. p diddy has always been like that super powerful figure behind the scenes like most people knew his name I feel like most people know P. Diddy, but they know him because of his connections to people, right. not necessarily his work or him as a person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you don't, yeah. you think you need that special ingredient to be able to like just brainwash yeah, people. Idiots. People wanted, people loved Chris Brown. They were in love with Chris Brown, still are, which is why he has those brain dead defenders that still fight for him. P. Diddy does not have that. I haven't, I have not seen a single Diddy apologist or anyone defending Diddy in any way. <laughs> Yeah, I see a bunch of people making fun of him, so that's cool. But yeah, other yeah. than that, yeah, the memes are good. Yeah. All right, so I want to just end this end this episode by saying I, it's a very like we we joked around a bit because I mean it, it's we're doing a show we kind of got to bring a bit of humor to stuff. Um, but like at the core of this, P Diddy seems like an evil person, and a lot of the things he mm. did were just extremely awful, horrible shit. And my sympathy and, you know, my heart goes out to the people affected by him, especially the people brave enough to make their allegations public like that. It takes a lot to do that. Um, So, yeah, my thoughts with them. It's an awful situation for them to be in, no doubt. And, 
Yeah, I hope I hope P Diddy sees he sees his day in court. I really do. Yeah. Any last thoughts from you guys? Nope, just a bad guy. <laughs> just a big fuck you to P Diddy, huh? Yep, just just what a, what a jerk, huh? What a bad guy. You, you know what, Jackson? After going over all that, I I disagree with you. I don't think he deserves a second chance. I know that you were pretty you know hard about that. Like, <laughs> oh guys, hear him out. You know, <laughs> fuck P, off. P Diddy's making a comeback, uh, but I don't know if I can agree with that at this. You point. better take your posters of P Diddy down. Now, Isaiah, no more being the biggest PDD fan. Never, never. The, that one track I can't remember the name of was so good. No, don't make me, please. He could all change. That was years ago. No, he can't. No, it wasn't years ago. It was literally like last year. I bet, I bet some of it was years ago. No. <laughs> There's allegations from this year. No, it's all bad. Uh, fuck, yeah, just a collective yeah. fuck you to PDD. Fuck PDD. Can we get some fuck PDDs in chat? In, in the comments below. Uh, that, that'd be Amen. great. Yeah. Wait, are we in danger? <laughs> I just realized it is. No. Okay, good. Like, I wasn't worried about, I wasn't worried about the people that killed Charles Morgan. I wasn't worried about Boeing, which is wild. Uh, I'm kind of worried about P. Diddy. Should I, should I not be? I mean, he could, I mean, he might throw out a lawsuit or something like that to you guys, not me, because I've said allegedly and it, you put it together. So. Alleged, alleged, alleged. That's true. Alleged, alleged, <laughs> alleged, 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 alleged. <laughs> well, Charlie, you take one for the team. I think you can deal with a lawsuit from P. Diddy, right? <laughs> I, I don't think so. <laughs> and I'll tell you what I absolutely can't deal with is my fucking car blowing up. <laughs> I have a zero tolerance for car explosions. Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. Get away from it. Uh, yeah, I, I like how we're thinking about lawsuits and this guy's actually deranged and got a gun and, and fucking willing yeah. to like blow up cars. So yeah, maybe maybe there's bigger things than just Allegedly. Lawsuits. All we did all we did was cover public allegations and accusations as they're written and said that based on those accusations, we don't like him. That's it. Yep, we we didn't right. make anything up. We didn't lie. We didn't say that these are definitively real and that, you know, whatever. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah I said, I believe they're real. All right. Well, you, you have fun with that. I said, allegedly. I said if you allegedly, have a problem with what I said, P. Diddy, take it out on Charlie. <laughs> All right. <see. laughs> Just uh, just as you, Diddy, yourself, were the mogul of people like Eminem, we are just the Eminems to Charlie's Diddy. <laughs> yeah. So Diddy, yeah, take it out he's the him. one you want. He's my legal representative, in fact. All right. There you go, yeah. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for watching this episode of Red Thread. That's going to do it for this episode. Huge thank you to our sponsors of this episode as well for putting it on. And thank you to all of you guys. Really does mean a lot. If you would be so kind as to rate it on Spotify, if you're listening on Spotify, that really helps us out. So let's leave a comment. Let us know your thoughts. We really, I, I read every single comment so I really enjoy engaging with the community in that way um, and also just a big thank you thank you for listening to the show it really does mean the world thank you yeah, thanks everyone bye 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 thank you all very much bye